Mr. Gabriel Levi. Hey, how's it going? What's up, dude? Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Man, it's been over a year. I've been doing this podcast for like two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right before the pandemic. Right, right before, before the pandemic. Yeah, the pandemic. yeah, we were on like not a very good mic. We mm-hmm. were on a futon. Bad like, acoustics. <laughs> I know, bad acoustics. Missed the first five minutes of the show. <laughs> and now, bro, we got like a three camera set up and it's, it's going well, bro. Elevation. Elevation, baby. Yeah. Proud of you, man. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. It's really... We, oh, do you like the drink? Delicious. So it's, do you it's like the, the breakfast one? The breakfast one. Yeah. So the, the whiskeys infused with bacon. Yeah. Bacon fat and then the coffee bitters. I can, I can a little bit of maple syrup. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good, dude. Yeah, it's weird how like... If you just do the same thing for a long period of time, it's just like, it's definitely going to be better. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's just like so many people try to like, or don't try to, but they just like stop. Yeah. Consistency, man. It's like, I mean, I've always had problems with that too. I'm not going to lie. I think, uh, you know, being here is, is, and seeing your journey is pretty crazy. Just because Thanks, man. It's like, it's, you're literally showing the results of it. It's like, you know, you started out so small in the little office and now you got your own spot everything's going well you got this cool bar set up thanks man up. and at the same time we're still drinking old-fashioned <laughs> same stuff so it's like same the same consistency thing. is yeah. what, kind of what matters and brings everything's kind of yeah together, so. why do you think uh people are not so consistent including like myself or even yourself like well what like it just like objectively you know if you do a thing why do you think people stop so i think short that People don't realize that to get somewhere, you really have to suffer. Mm-hmm. And that's not a bad suffer thing. Suffer in a way. Um, suffer in pain mm-hmm. and, and uh, loss. And, and people aren't willing to like uh, accept that that comes at all different degrees. You know, mm-hmm. people think that uh, if they lose friends on their journey to do something, it's, it's the worst thing. Mm-hmm. Like there's no, at the end of that road, there's not going to be friends that kind of will bring you more mm-hmm. uh, happiness and kind of more peace of mind. Uh, I think you know. Currently, I'm I'm in this day where like you know I'm doing this brand. Mm. Um, Heavy is that the yeah, name of the brand? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, Keep and, the hat, guys. Keep the yeah, hat. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, I've I've been doing a lot of you know changes, changing in my mindset, especially with like discipline. Yeah. And the way the way that I get up and the way that I you know kind of try to uh, keep track of my consistency. Yeah. You know, whether it be uh, what time I wake up. Mm. Um, how I kind of check myself in the morning yeah. and then also, um, you know, just prioritizing the things that are going to be uh, beneficial for me and the people that I love, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and surrounding myself with people that just have the best interest, my best interest, yeah. in mind, you know, cause I, I think that when we're younger, we kind of are start are really searching for, for places and people do this at all different ages. Mm-hmm. Some people figure it out a lot faster. Um, I'm 30 now, so I think yeah. that I'm I'm kind of in that place where it's like the perfect time. <laughs> yeah, you know, you definitely get this kind of like weird crisis level of thought sure. where you're like, certain things are over, and you know, it's kind of this weird like new beginning that I'm going through where it's like, damn, I kind of have this new level of respect for myself, and I I kind of expect the same level of respect from others mm-hmm. because of the fact that I've gone through so much life experience. Sure. Um, good and bad. I guess like a lot of people don't like figure it out until like later too. Like even in their like, I don't know, bro. I have family members and friends and uh, who are who have family members who are like their fifties who like are really depressed. Don't understand like what the purpose of their life is mm-hmm. or like don't have any goals. And it's interesting because like the people that I guess like me and you are like really close with, that's not like the case. You yeah. know, and it's it's not necessarily it's it's really who you surround yourself with and i just don't understand what you're talking about by the suffering can you like talk about it yeah i think that? because like losing friends i don't understand i don't think that's like necessarily suffering i think that's you're growing at a different pace than what they are yeah i i, I think that that's i think personally that's one of the ways that i've suffered mm-hmm. um i've had like a couple years back you know i feel like i was just kind of like wandering mm-hmm. and um i was helping a lot of people that really didn't deserve my help mm. and that could be in the forms of like just um company mm. keeping the wrong company i'm like sure. uh somebody needed me just to chill, hang out it's like okay cool i'll come hang out but yeah. it's like how is this helping me sure uh, and then i think the suffering comes when you kind of remove yourself from those situations mm-hmm. and you kind of still get the calls and still get the text yeah. and it's like it's, you feel bad but i think that's for the like it's like this personal like 
I call it suffering just because it's kind of the only way that I can describe it. Yeah. Really, like it's because you still care about these exactly. these people. Yeah, you, you but know, like you have to set that boundary exactly. Yeah. And I think that's that is a form of suffering. Mm-hmm. And I think suffering can also be um, just stopping kind of habits that were holding you back that you kind of fail to acknowledge yeah. either voluntarily or involuntarily yeah. that have caught up with you. Yeah. Um, and it's and making a hard stop on those habits is is super hard for people yeah you know people don't want to stop being who they are right now mm-hmm. you know because it's uncomfortable so yeah it's uncomfortable changing in general though. yeah like um if it's like working out which is a, a very fine example mm-hmm. it's like oh i'm gonna decide to run every day yeah right and if you just sit down every day and you've never been outside like that's a very hard change absolutely you know yeah small things like that how have you i know i know your routine has changed yeah. like dramatically yeah within the last like year like yeah. what's what's what are the things that you're doing in the morning or whatever um, to uh i guess be the most productive i mean the first thing is just not putting the alarm aside man you know it's like mm. like really just like i try to get up between like six and seven thirty yeah. and i just kick my ass in the head to get up like i'll really just be like i have to get up do you set your alarm at a certain yeah, time yeah i set it between like Depending on when I go to sleep, I'll mm-hmm. set it at like six thirty or like seven fifteen. Mm-hmm. I'm envious of you, bro, yeah. because I don't know when I go to bed. Some days, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was exactly. just like, I wish I could go to bed yeah. at around the same time and wake up early or not. Yeah, but because I feel like it's healthy for you. Bro. No, for sure. Like, there's so many sleep studies saying like if you go to bed around the certain mm-hmm. time, like every day, like you have more energy, like yeah. yeah, longevity is better. Yeah, know, for sure. Know. I think that's been like. And that's just super recent. It's not like it's like I I'm still learning how to really be about it. But I think like in the past maybe like two or three months, it's been something that like I built up to be like really strong at. It's like just get up, mm-hmm. like I'll boom, I'll kick up, kick up my feet and just sit up and like I'm up now. You know. What do you do? You ever have days where like uh, you you don't do that? Yeah, for sure. It'll yeah. be like at least one day out of the week where I'm like, damn. Like, I'm gonna stay in bed. <laughs> I'm to like nine, 30, it's because of the rain, bro. Yeah, LA, no. LA doesn't oh, get rain God. like this, dude. The rain kills me this kind of week, man. I'm like, I hate the rain too. A lot of people will be like, I love the rain, this and that. It's like you love the rain because you see rain seven yeah, times a year in exactly. LA. Bro. And I, I feel like every rainy day I have to do something outside, which is like I like I don't mind the rain if I can just stay inside all day. Sure. And even like having to walk my dogs yeah. outside in there, I'm like, damn, this sucks. Yeah. Like, this just ruins everything. I gotta change clothes right when I get back inside. Yeah. It's like, dude, how's ha- how's having a bulldog? Like last time you were on, you didn't have, you you didn't have a, yeah. a bulldog at all. Dude, these are children. I like my mom got me this dog and Nando. Shouts out Nando. Yeah, Shouts out Nando. It's my boy. Um, and it's a lot of responsibility. I well, think it, not a lot of people have bulldogs, bro. Like, yeah. can you describe like the, like what they're like or like the experience of just having a puppy bulldog and then like yeah. having grown into like this guy is dense, guys. Yeah. He's like sixty pounds. Sixty pounds, like just a small ball, <laughs> but like I don't know, he's cute, but like in the most ugly way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, bulldogs are the dog where it's like when you hear a face only a mother can love. That's what it, it's like. They're so ugly, it's cute. It's yeah. Like, um, he's just he's smart man and and like stubborn that's mm-hmm. the main thing is like stubborn like he knows exactly what you're telling him yeah and he will not do it and it's just like but I think it's like dogs are funny because they they demand you to be patient at all times like mm-hmm. how so because everything is about repetition with them yeah and routine and it's like I have to get up for you and make sure you go to the bathroom. Otherwise, you, I, I, you suffer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got to deal with something in my house. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, you know, I got to, you're caring for something. And, yeah. and also something that doesn't really understand you directly. Like, you know, yeah. it's like dogs are such a big uh, uh, teacher of lessons for humans. And, sure. And they're so calming. But they're at the same time, they're like, they're assholes, man. They're yeah. like, you know, they know what they're doing. They're smart enough to know what they're doing. Sure. Um, but I, I, find, I find it so interesting because like, it's always nice to have, like, a well-trained dog, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, like, they understand you because, like, you could say some shit and they will do it or you would say some shit and they don't. And, exactly. like, it could be the same thing different days. And, like, it'll, yeah. it's like, which one am I going to get Depending today? on the circumstances and, and, like, yeah. But I find it so funny because, like, you just think about, like, them as an animal and as, like, languages. Like, there's other countries that have dogs. Mm-hmm. And they speak in different languages to these yeah. dogs. But, like, they still figure out what that means. Right? And so, like, that really fucks with me sometimes. It is. So I was like, wow, because you don't, I, I didn't really 
experience it until I went out to the country for out of the country for the first mm-hmm. time last year. Yeah, to Europe, and I saw some dogs, and um, the owners were talking in a different language, <laughs> like an Italian, and I was like, "Wow, like it's not just like sit." Yeah, they probably said something to some other version. Yeah, of yeah. Sit. and I was like, "That's interesting." Yeah, they definitely. I think it's more like they they just pick up on the tones of everything. Like they're very like tone driven. Mm-hmm. So you could say. You can cuss out your dog in the most friendly, <laughs> friendly voice, and they'll be happy about it. Like you know what I'm saying? You think so? Yeah, definitely. Trust me. <laughs> you can, it's like you, you get some shit. Yeah, you're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, yeah, you love me, but it's like you know. But if I were to like you know have more of a, a, a you know anger driven like uh, voice, and mm-hmm. it's just like they know when you're mad. Yeah. Or you know. So I think it's all like an emotional basis. The dogs are interesting, man. They definitely teach you a lot. Yeah. They they give you a lot of like it's good to have them because they they, they never make you feel like alone. Mm-hmm. Like you know, mm-hmm. like I'll be at home and I I never feel like <laughs> I'm by myself in yeah. the best way. Like yeah. I'll just be like, man, this is nice because I know that I have someone that I can like have a you know a dog that I can just you know seek comfort in. And sure. They're gonna give it to you. I really do think that like they give humans like some sort of like comfort and yeah. healing and yeah definitely did you have you seen all the pet pigs lately yeah i wanted one i keep telling my girl eventually when, really when i get a big Dude, backyard I, I don't think pigs are meant to be domesticated like that bro. i don't i mean maybe not but <laughs> I, it's just it's like because it's like are, i'd rather domesticate it than have it you know just eat. like where yeah, yeah like <laughs> And it's if I'm can save one, and they're they're kind of the same as dogs. They're smart, they're yeah. Smart animals, so it's like you have to, um, you know, as long as you're not treating it, like you're treating it like a pig. Like, I don't know what that means. And me either, but I think, <laughs> I think, I, 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 like in getting one, you'd have to learn. You know, like sure. I think when you approach things like that, you have to learn like how to. Also, there's like I guess a spectrum of pigs. Mm-hmm. There's like the wild boar with like yeah. that's trying to kill you, mm-hmm. and then there's also like the teacup pigs yeah. that oh I'm so cute type of deal mm-hmm. but like that's just like baby pig like pigs aren't meant to be small yeah exactly life, pretty, you know? yeah. but like I don't I don't know it's, I think it's the same with dogs though you could get a piece of shit dog sometimes <laughs> you know like that's yeah. trying like dogs never put down like uh, one of my friends he went back home mm-hmm. and like his friend's dog basically mauled his face and like, he had to go to the hospital, get a ton of stitches, Damn. and, like, they had to put the dog down. That's why. And I was like, that sucks. Yeah. Because, like, oh, you love this friend who loves his dog, but his dog also molded me. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what do I do with that? No, I mean, yeah. I, I think it really comes with, like, why do you want to pick, bro? It's just, <laughs> I mean, in spite of the whole, like, uh, you got enough on your plate, bro. You don't need yeah, to Yeah, right. I think it'll come when when it when you know my life is at a level where I'm just at home all day and yeah, I just want a pig just running around. Yeah. I'll have the space for it. I'll have the the uh, amenities for it. Yeah, pig, you know. But who knows? Maybe I'll have like other animals. I've always wanted like a, some sort of little haberdashery of of farm animals or really know, something to keep me busy. Why? Yeah. I just think it's like kind of. Just natural to if you're gonna if we're gonna like have some sort of, um, like this ecosystem of like connection to to nature and, sh- and shit. It's like, why not learn these skills mm-hmm. and learn how to like you know have your own things like that. You know, mm-hmm. but that's that. Of course, I couldn't do it right now. That's just <laughs> interesting to say that because like you're an LA boy, you born yeah. raised here, bro, and like there's not a lot of like places like that. Yeah, but I LA. think that's what. Uh, or like a lot of people don't have that lifestyle. Yeah, out here. That's that sucks. Like you know, like I think I that, mean, it does suck. I think there's such a big population of LA people who aren't so deep, in, so deep into the the matrix that is LA. Like their heads are just not in their ass that mm-hmm. just like are thirsting for some sort of like natural remedy to of like you know what the world actually has to offer you know mm-hmm. rather than like being so soaked up in what we have going on here mm-hmm. it's like there's so much that you can get connected to what do you mean soaked up with what we got going on here like la is just such a, a consumer and like uh 
image driven city that people kind of don't look outside of themselves and mm. see that there's like a lot of world. I can guarantee you a large population of LA have never been outside of California. Sure. You know, and that's LA. We're like a, a kind of like a, a catalyst to like worldly culture. Mm. And a large population of LA has not been outside of even California. Mm. Um, like I've never been outside of the country. Yet, yeah. You know? And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go this year, but it's like, Oh, you haven't? No, I've been to Mexico. But... That counts, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that to me, it's like, all right, it, that's still like semi California. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like if people kind of like sought things that were really, really more natural that weren't like a ski resort mm-hmm. that weren't like, you know, your basic like camping, uh, you know, really structured camping site, like mm-hmm. where it's like you're right next to somebody else. It's like, but they really sought out how to like survive in these like really natural environments, you know, safely, of course, not mm-hmm. just go out in the woods and just but, sure. like, prepare themselves for stuff like that. Right. They kind of get an understanding of like why whatever certain things are happening, whether it be like environmental things, and they kind of have more respect for like, you know, especially the way that, you know, LA is like expanding and, mm-hmm. and just rising. And, yeah. You know, it's like, I think that people, when people had more of that thought process of like a more respectful, I just feel like they don't know. Yeah, but I, are they willing to know? You know, that's the also the main thing. Is like, it's not necessarily they don't have time to. I think like, they just grew up in a age where like their parents or their environment didn't allow them access to that type of curiosity. Absolutely, because. Uh, Dude, like, I barely know any people now who have ever camped before, too. Yeah, yeah it's you crazy. Know? And um, it, it's, a, it's a weird, I guess, the economy, because, like, there's a ton of people who've experienced the world in L.A. Mm-hmm. because they've experienced so much success that they were allowed to do that. Yeah. There's a ton of people who have not. And yeah. I would say that's, like, the majority, you know? And, like, it's weird because we care so much about success right we mm-hmm. care so much about like i guess like getting your bag and achieving what you want to mm-hmm. achieve but like going out to like for me when i went to europe i would hang out with like a german guy who literally told me he's from germany he's like i save up all my money nine months out of the year and i blow it in three months and i travel the world just for experience yeah he's just like i enjoy my life i do it yeah. every single year and i'm okay with that that's crazy you know i'm just like wow like, yeah he's like yeah i don't care about anything else which is like I'm experiencing a different, multiple different countries for three months, for nine months I work hard. Suffering. <laughs> is it though? Like for him, it might. Well, that's be. what I mean. I think that, that, like, I think that that is suffering. It's see, the thing is, like, I'm not saying it like like suffering isn't always like a negative thing. You mm-hmm. know, I think it's more like a, it's, it has an intent. There's mm-hmm. an intent to it. I think if you're really doing it with intent, it's mm-hmm. gonna. That's the reason why you kind of. It doesn't mean you're getting hurt. Sure. Really, it doesn't mean you're like you're you're dying or, yeah. or something that um it just means that you're going through something and I think that's the best way to package it all. It's like I gotta go through this to, to make sure I'm I'm getting where I need to go, you know? Yeah. And where I wanna go. Yeah. You know? So it's just I'm just talking about like uh the, the different types of I guess for him his success is like I wanna ex- explore the world for mm-hmm. those three months and I don't really care if I save any money. Yeah. Or do or, or do become anything, yeah, or yeah. whatever. And LA is just like I want to become everything. Yeah, but but they seek it only yeah. here, you know. So yeah, a lot they, of them only dude, seek most it. they seek people, it here so that they have the opportunity to to maybe venture out and do something different. But they always want to come back here and like yeah. Like I mean, I feel like I have that in me too. It's like I I, I love it here, bro. Yeah, I would never <laughs> leave LA like living wise. I would always like kind of exit the exit where I'm at and come right back. Yeah. You know? Like I want to have a house here and have a family here but I couldn't imagine like leaving just because it's like it's such a, a easy place to live if you do it right you know like at any easy. level you think it's easy I think it's pretty like mild like I mean I was raised here so I've never seen anything that's really different you know mm. like where it's like if you go to like New York and it's such a fast pace it's hard to keep up mm. like, you know you get you kind of get locked into like your borough yeah you know I guess like I guess what's your what's your definition of easy living because to some people that's like having a house, having that yard that you're talking mm-hmm. about, all those things. 
and like enjoying life without much stress in that way. I feel like LA is not that definition of easy. I don't know. I think easy is when things are available to you if you're able to manage like uh, at least 70% of the shit going on in your mm-hmm. life. Like, you know, because the other 30% you can't really control. Yeah. Um, I just feel like, in general, like, yeah. life is easy compared to, like, 100 years ago. Oh, yeah, you could go to a grocery store and, like, get fucking mm-hmm. food. And we have a washer and dryer, like, yeah. wash our clothes. And, like, we're so dependent on these things now because, yeah. like, a few months ago, my washer and dryer didn't work. Mm-hmm. I was like, fuck. Like, I have to go to laundromat. But laundromats didn't even exist before. Yeah. So, like, you think about that aspect. You're like, wow. Like, people had to literally, like, scrub exactly. in bathtubs and shit. Yeah. And I was like, wow, we are so privileged that we forget about, like, how easy we have it. Yeah. I think and so that, there's, like, different, there's different levels of easy. Yeah. I also think my definition is more so I kind of see everything, like, uh, every, a lot of opportunities available to me just with the mindset of, like, if I take action towards, like, you know, helping myself survive, even at a survival level, yeah. I, it, it's, it's not much I have to do to just... You know, be able to make a couple hundred dollars a day if I really just take that day and do one thing yeah. that I know. But you also have a skill set too yeah. that allows but you I, to do that. You know, but that was something that I I built up and had to like manage, and yeah. that's what made my definition of easy. Because that's not it's not like I'm, I'm rich. It's more like I know I'm never gonna be um, on or, skid row. Yeah, <laughs> I believe I'm never gonna be like in a place where everything is gone or sure. taken away from me. And yeah. I think that that comes with like, that's what I mean by easy. It's like, I know I've, I've built myself up to a point where like, yeah. it's not going to get taken away from me if yeah. I keep doing what I'm doing. Also feel like you're hungry and stuff. Yeah. But even at the bottom level of like my yeah. skill set, if I said five days out of the week, I don't want to do anything. Yeah. In two days, I want to go a hundred percent. Yeah. I would be okay. Yeah. That's my mindset. So sure. I guess that maybe like if everybody kind of had that, that mindset. I mean, uh, objectively, that is easy. Yeah. Though, you know? That's easy. That's what becomes, if that's what easy is. To yeah. Me. It's available. Uh, and back to like people care about like what they look like, their status and everything, like being a barber in LA. It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's weird because like I went home, dude, and like uh, a friend of mine asked me for my Fresno barber's like number and mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, I haven't seen him in like years, but he was like, "Oh yeah, it wasn't that expensive? It was like twenty five bucks." <laughs> and I was just like, "Yo, cool. hey, cool." <laughs> it's just like out here, like an average cut. You go to a, just a regular barber shop, like minimum is forty five. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you know, and then like there's some people who charge like a hundred bucks for a dude man. for a dude's haircut. It's crazy. See, I don't, I, I don't do that just because I don't want to get locked into that space anymore. I'm like, I'm almost out of it in my head mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> not physically so i guess like that confuses me sometimes like when we talk because mm-hmm. like at one point last last time we talked on the mm-hmm. podcast you wanted to like open up your own barber yeah. shop you know yeah and like i guess i i see barbering as an art you yeah, know? yeah because yeah. like you make you make the person feel confident in yeah, themselves yeah. and it's objectively better looking mm-hmm. than like a messy hair yeah yeah right and I'm just like, oh, like that, that sounds to me, I'm not a barber, so I don't really know. But like, that sounds to me like you would get a ton of joy and whatever out of it that like, I would continue to do it because you are good at it. Yeah. I, I think it's more, well, hey, the, my biggest thing about barbering is just so much wear and tear. Mm. It, fuck, it fucks up your body. Like, Can you explain that? Because my, like, objectively, I'm just like, dude, you're just cutting my hair. Yeah. My back hurts. <laughs> My back hurts so bad all the time. Yeah, like, like yeah. is it just because like you're bending over, standing bending, up all the time? My arm, my shoulder blades. Mm-hmm. And I just like yeah. I don't. How many years have you been doing it? Like Twelve, yeah. thirteen, yeah, a long time, man. And now I'm young still in the in that aspect of the game, you know. Yeah, I definitely could have been going a lot harder in it, but I just never wanted to get like so absorbed in it that it's like. And also, it's like yeah, but you were so passionate about it. Yeah, the sense that you wanted to have your own shop. I think I just saw like I saw a pathway to it, mm. and then I kind of like did a double take, and I'm like, if I do this, I know that I have to go 100, percent and I'm not gonna do otherwise. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel like I wanted to be doing that every single day for like even 
two or three years mm-hmm. until it kind of takes care of itself. But sure. just because it's like, I, I have a lot of other things that I want to do, including this, especially this brand, which mm-hmm. is like, this has been something that since I was a kid, I wanted to, I wanted mm-hmm. to have my own, like, you know, clothes or, you know, this and that. So like what like, age? Shit, like 10. Really? Like, yeah. Like, what do you think sparked that? Um, shit, honestly, like rap videos and just like magazines and things like that. Just seeing like, just, and like my friends, like my surroundings, like all my, you know, it's like getting the new shoes and. I think it's just like that spark that it puts like every single time I see something I want, I cons- like I want to consume or this and that, uh, clothing wise, it's like it kind of gives me a spark. Like, damn, that's so crazy that that feeling it makes me more excited than anything else. Mm-hmm. And I think that I kind of, especially with making it and having ideas, they get me excited. Mm-hmm. So I think that I'm just trying to follow that feeling, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's hard because you know I haven't really put the most work into, um, I guess, building my skill set on, like, designing. I've definitely taken, like, sewing classes, and I know how to do all these things. Where does that start? Like, when someone's, like, I guess for you, like, I don't know anything about, like, Mm -hmm. the fashion world or clothing and manufacturing there. Like, I've I've read, like, a couple books, like, Phil Knight's, like, Shoe Dog and stuff about how he went to different countries and figured out how to, like, make better shoes over time, right? Yeah. But... Like, did it just start with, like, Google for you? Like, how do I get hat manufacturers? It's like... Oh, uh, yeah. Where, where? A lot of it is that. A lot of it is that. You know, especially because, you know, we're... Right now, we're entering... We're in this space where, like... We have, like, a good network of people that mm-hmm. are going to help us along the way. Um, but, you know, like I said, we're... We're, we're not... Uh, we're new to the game, you mm-hmm. know, and we're not like super established as like these guys, and, like, mm-hmm. these creative in that industry. Like, sure. These people, where it's like a lot of the kind of really established people, they've been in these games for since we were kids. Yeah. You know, whether they be like just in the crowds or you you're know, just talking like brands, brand brands, ones? yeah, that yeah. have are kind of either getting started or they're established. You know, whatever two three years even like mm-hmm. like they're new still. Yeah, they've been in the game like yeah. for, in any way. Like it's mm-hmm. like you. Like almost like in spirit, it's it's you've been a bartender most of your life. You yeah. might have a hundred bartender friends, and they even know you, and that's how the support would come. Sure, you know. So I think that of course we have a network, and mm. but we're not known for that. You yeah, know? we're not. Know, I'm known as a barber from a, a bunch of my friends, yeah. friends and acquaintances. You've been doing it for twelve yeah. years. Like. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's kind of trying to get out of that space, and yeah. also um, I'm trying to approach it really as like intently as possible mm-hmm. and giving it like I do a lot of research just trying to find like manufacturers yeah. and uh just trying to get my knowledge up on like what's the best way to go about this because like I said I, I am 30 mm-hmm. and I think like we always talk about you know how do we how are we doing our business practices mm-hmm. and LLC and this and that and and are we paying our taxes right and yeah I we, I think that we take this seriously or I take it seriously at least because I think if if I approach it in a way where I'm handling all the surrounding, you know, uh, I guess items, like simply as I can put it. Yeah. Uh, it'll make me more, um, it'll make me feel a lot more serious about, you know, that this is really happening yeah. rather than like, I'm just mindlessly creating. And I mean, bro, that, that thing, that LLC, it makes you like, you're a limited liability, you're a legit company. Yeah. And, like, it's hard to turn on the switch mm-hmm. that, like, oh, this is real as yeah. fuck. Yeah. Like, on paper, it's real. Yeah. And you have to, it's it's up to you to prove to the world that it can be a long-lasting exactly. company. Exactly, yeah. You know? And starting something that no one knows mm-hmm. is tough. It is. And I'm curious for you because, like, dude, the clothing market is just saturated. Everyone, yeah. everyone wears clothes. Yeah. Everybody wears clothes, Everybody. right? But there's also a billion fucking uh, brands out there. Yeah. So what inspired you to like want to try or do, because you're currently doing yeah. it, get into that market? Because like, you know it's hard objectively. Yeah. You know it is. I know it is. Yeah. So like, why would you choose that path for you? Uh, because I'd rather be doing that than anything else, A. Like, I'd rather just be in that space where... You know, I've, I've worked in retail a lot, too, like yeah. in between barbering or this and that, you know, uh, and just seeing, like, observing consumers mm. and 
also seeing things I don't like about like the market, like the quality, sure, and uh, you know the marketing approach and this and that, and also things I really like, like the the stores I want to be in mm. that I've worked at, like that'd be like what? Give like, me a brand that like you like. Uh, I mean, like Stussy is always cool. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like a skating brand, though, right? They're like skating surfing. Okay, but they're kind of like establishing themselves like as more of like a a cut and sew brand, like higher okay. end, like streetwear sure um i like comme de garçon always uh i've never heard of that yeah like paris shit uh but like they're like age old they're like Mm -hmm. old they've been doing it for years like 90s 80s yeah well is it stussy's is that how you say it yeah like i remember in like sixth grade like dudes rocking those shirts yeah but see they had they had like a almost like a creative hiatus where like their shit was going they were getting sold in zoomies yeah you know and now they don't sell in Zoomies anymore. Now they're doing like their own, like really, you know, really good crafted clothing. Like yeah. they're taking their time. Mm. And that's like, you know, so people have these rebrands, but they're like, they're never going to go away if yeah. they keep doing what they're doing, like and kind of shifting with the culture, like smoothly. Yeah. Um, but then it's like, there's new brands and there's people that are like, there's so many brands on the internet now. Mm. Um, and like from younger kids and kids are getting into like style and like really independent style and mm-hmm. that's super cool um i think the whole idea with us and our brand is just one thing i really don't like is like in the industry yeah it is just like this, this even like i think it's just spread across our whole the whole entertainment uh fashion um you know all that like the media industry is just like this focus such a big focus on nostalgia and that's always good i think nostalgia the, meaning meaning what? everybody's always looking backwards yeah. they're looking towards like what happened in the past and trying to reframe uh, it so much and you know kids are doing like 2000 style and that's the focus or they're doing mm-hmm. like everybody's doing like let's redo the 80s or the 60s or this it's like mm-hmm. and i feel like we've been doing that for years now like rebrand remake a movie movies that's all we get now mm-hmm. all new remix like yeah the same thing yeah um uh, with a different cast yeah you know? <laughs> and uh just like the same ideas just same story just recycled, same recycled. sure um uh i feel like i guess i don't know if movies are the best example because you can only tell a story so many times right? yeah true but i guess for like clothing i mean clothing is circular it's gonna it's definitely gonna uh, uh, i don't know though like you can invent something different in day that someone would wear that yeah. could be like ridiculous or this like similar you know yeah and so like i don't know if you could categorize like the clothing market yeah into i guess like the movie entertainment stuff true i just think it's the mindset sure like more the mindset rather than like the actual uh material mm-hmm. just because it's like at what point do we start evolving into um really what's new you know mm-hmm. it's like if, if that were true, mm-hmm. well, uh, completely true, it's like we'd still be in uh, stockings and clogs, you know, it's like, sure. and this and that. It's like, at what point did that become uh, it, totally obsolete, you know what I'm saying? And, like, and what where's yeah. that shift in the culture or the shift in the mindset of like, yeah. we need to do something completely new. Yeah, like no um, one wears fucking... There's always going to be a shirt and pants and, yeah. and socks. You got to cover your body. Sure. But at what point does it become something completely different where mm. it's observed differently and accepted differently? Because, I mean, I feel like with social media, it's really hard to do that. Do because, what? Because. Do, do what? Uh, really hard to do do what? new shit. Do There's new definitely shit, like right? an opportunity to do it. Yeah. Uh, but I think that it's hard for that that entry because, A, people, like social media is, is, is essentially a drug. It tells people like, I'm only going to show you what, what's comfortable to you. I was having a conversation with my, one of my best friends about this, like, obviously everybody knows this, but the algorithm is t- tailored to you, you know? It's yeah. like, this is for me. Yeah. So what does that mean? Like, that means that I'm comfortable with everything I'm seeing right now mm-hmm. with an occasional discomfort. And that occasional discomfort might shift my view if I keep, you know, mm-hmm. tapping it and this and that. But it's constantly feeding you something that you're comfortable with. Sure. So at that point, new all the time, I'm not really drawn to it or it's kind of making me mad or angry or it's fucking up my whole reality. You mm-hmm. know? So at what point do we kind of find a formula that says we want to feed you like a new way of thinking 
But that's yeah. hard. That, that's hard to do because like uh, everyone's so like commerce based, right? And yeah. They're like, I'm gonna feed this person every single thing that yeah. right now that he enjoys and likes and yeah. whatever because I want him to buy my shit. Yeah. Or like I don't know, like politic wise, like mm-hmm. if you like certain things that you like politically, like they're just gonna feed you everything. That you agree with, and then you just agree with it even more. Exactly, you reaffirming. Know? It's just you know? reaffirming. It's just reaffirming like what you so, believe. I, when I, in reality, like s- most of the world, mm-hmm. or half the world at least, does not agree with it. Yeah. But you never see that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're never exposed to that point of view. Yeah, at least not often. Not and often. when you are, you're so compelled by the things that you've already seen that you disagree with it fully. You yeah, know? when your buddy from fucking Missouri or yeah. whatever it comes over and has a totally different yeah feed like, yeah view. Or yeah. feed, yeah. and you're just like, nah, you're wrong. Yeah. And he says, nah, you're wrong. It's because you guys also don't see yeah. each other's shit anytime at all. At all. ever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's, but I think that's the mission I've given myself, which is tough. But I, I think that. What do you mean, mission that you give Like to, to try to bring something new to the mm-hmm. table, to like really change it, but not, you know, of course, there's always, you have to kind of lean into it, but, yeah. um, you know, we're making hats right now. Yeah, and we're making T-shirts, obviously. But I guess back to the original question, like why? Why would you go into something that you already knew was going to be hard, mm-hmm. and you already knew like there's so many clothing brands, like it's saturated. Yeah. Like why? Why? Why are you doing that? I really don't have a, a super good answer. I think it's just it's just like a feeling, and mm-hmm. it's like I don't feel just really. Like, it's I don't feel happy to... at looking at the end goal of any other situation in my life mm. like especially like career wise and like you know where i put my energy towards like, like work wise i don't really feel like as happy thinking about that and end state either when i think about the end state of like what we're doing right now even if it's not going to be that it feels so good that i just like i want to keep doing it. i'd rather yeah. keep doing this and struggling and, and dealing with like you know not knowing certain things and, and finding out yeah then just constantly doing like the same you know let me go try to find a job even if it is in the creative industry or yeah. like, i'd rather do it for myself yeah you know because I've, I've done so many of these different jobs and this and that barbering and this and i've seen so many also i've seen a lot of people in so many different ways of life through just life experience that i'm just like this thought process has never changed in my mind mm. like i've never been compelled to do that when I've seen somebody else's career, and even if I thought it was cool or or even like read about something, it's like that's never really mm. passed my mind to be like, maybe I should look into that. Yeah, I relate to that. I have a friend who like loves cooking, right? Mm-hmm. It's like he talks about it so passionately. I respect it, so it's super cool. Yeah. But I'm like, I would never want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, it's somebody like I would at home, hell yeah, like I'll do or, or cook at home, yeah. yeah, you know, or same shit with you, bro. I like for me, yeah. like. I'm a very like black shirt, solids yeah. all day type of guy. I was like, I don't really like I I kind of match mm-hmm. like all these things, but like for me, like I'm like I, I would never do that. Yeah, no, I respect it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's hard, man. Yeah. And it might be the same for like I don't know if I want to make cocktails all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I think like the one thing that um, like there's tons of things that I know I'd be good at. Like I know I could do like fitness. Mm-hmm like for a long time and be into it mm-hmm. just because it comes naturally sure um and it's like something that like drives me every day or i could do um like tons of i don't know but there's just like little small things where i'm like oh that'd be cool yeah to do for a period of time in my life sure but it's never been like this where i'm like i look i, I have ideas all the time and yeah i just want to put them down and like try to make them real where do you think that intuition comes from because I have that same feeling with, like, I guess what I'm doing, too. Mm-hmm. Like, but it's just, like, deep in me. I don't know why. It's just, like, this is what I'm doing, and I feel like it's the right thing to do. Yeah. I think some people can, like, either track it down to a, a single moment sometimes, or others can just feel, like, a constant flow of, like, this is right, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, I'm the one that... I can't really track it down to a single moment, but I think it's just like it's been eating at me for so long. That mm-hmm. Like I have to, I'd rather do that. And yeah. Just like then be having it eat at me all the time. Yeah. You know, because I haven't done it yet. Well, that eating at you thing, like it's like there's this. 
I don't know if it's like a spirit or your intuition mm-hmm. or like whatever. It's like, yay, you got to be working on this shit, bro. <laughs> like you got to be working yeah, on yeah. it. And it's me. It's the same thing. It's like, Nate, you got to be like putting out content. You got to be doing all this stuff. I'm like, where the fuck is this voice coming from? Yeah. dude? And it's like, it's really interesting because everyone somewhat has it as, I, I don't know if it's like your conscience or whatever, but usually a conscious like, oh, this is good, this is bad. This voice is different. This is this voice is like, this means a lot to you. Mm-hmm. This voice is saying like, hey, if you want to be at this spot and be this happy person, like, yeah. this is what you need to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm just like, fuck, dude, where are you coming from? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's also like, like, we do so many other things too Mm -hmm. and we don't find either a we don't have that feeling that we're gonna find that that kind of sense of happiness at the end of like even like the smallest things like when you're working out yeah you're kind of like i don't really feel that that same like i'm at the end of this workout even i'm gonna feel as good as i think i'm gonna feel Mm -hmm. when i'm my my shit takes off yeah you know yeah or you know I guess working out slightly different because like you will, your body gives you a, like a, a euphoric high. Yeah, yeah. Like after and stuff like that. But like I guess like just working out in general yeah. and getting, I guess for me fitness wise mm-hmm. like clients and everything like that doesn't give me the joy. Yeah, that's kind of what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That's more that I would get of like I, I guess, don't know like if heavy took off. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like you know like it's like barbering. Like I know I'm good at it. You're great at it. Bro. Yeah. Every every single person that I referred like it's, to you like. They're, they're like, wow, I, I haven't felt this way, like, how good I look, you know? Yeah. Thank you. I know. Appreciate which is, that, yeah. Which is, like, a talent, too. No, yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I just, I never, like, after doing it so long, I'm just like, it's just what I, I would think. never want to just keep doing this. I know. Like, which is, know? like, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Cause because, it's... like, the fact that you are getting these affirmations yeah. from your friends, clients, whatever, yeah. and you're just like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Versus, like... Yeah, I love it. I'm gonna do yeah. it for the rest of my life. And, there's, there's, and there I, are there I are barbers so like many that. people like that. Yeah. I know so many barbers like that that are friends, and it's like, where the fuck is this coming from? <laughs> like, where? Like, how did you? And I got I have a homie that's like, I went to a barber school with him, and he he had just got out of jail when we, yeah. you know, and he was he had been doing like other stuff, like he was doing like before he went to jail. He went to jail with some dumb shit, but um. He was doing like mortgage lending before. Yeah, you know, he was like my age when he got into barber. Yeah, um, so I was like eighteen, mm-hmm. and he was like around 20, 28 to thirty. Mm-hmm. So he had been doing like mortgage lending, and he had been doing like he was just a hustler. So he was always making like money. I think it's just like when he got into barbering, he just saw that you know he could talk to people, mm-hmm. and I think that I think that if you're surrounded by all these like key elements of your needs, mm-hmm. all these key needs that you have as a person. Mm-hmm. That it then becomes like easier to become happy in this. He needs. What do you mean he needs? Like him, it's like he loved talking to people. Yeah. Barbara and we talk to people all, all the time. Yeah. He, he loved making his own money. Sure. He loved making, you know, yeah. he, he liked to have freedom in his job. Yeah. And there's always kind of like room to elevate, which sure. is like you start at $20 haircuts and now he's getting paid $1,500 for a haircut. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, he's like a good, he's the celebrity. Fifteen hundred yeah, for like video shoots. You're getting fifteen hundred for the day. Twenty five hundred. You're getting flown out to like a football player's house. It's like this type of stuff. Wow. It's like I had opportunities to do that, and I just was like, no. Like I know. Even as a young kid, I just never wanted to do that because yeah. I was like, I'm gonna get soaked up into this, and yeah. I already did enough. Yeah. Like you know, like it's not like like I did this. I've done barbering like inconsistently. Like it's I've taken years off, and like. You know, of course, I'm doing it, but it just like, comes to you, bro. Because yeah. like you're good at it, and so mm-hmm. people like you. You're the only barber who like has zero promotions, yeah. zero whatever, and you still make good money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, I think it's just like <laughs> it's all word of mouth. I think that you. you you keep doing it intently and like with intensity. Yeah. If it's like really hitting those like uh kind of like notches in your like what you need, and, and that like, doesn't do it for you. Nah, hell mm-hmm. no. It's fucking. It's distracting mm. it takes a long time sure and i don't need to talk to people that way <laughs> like i love i love my homies i love you i yeah. love my, you know it's like yeah but i don't need to talk, be around people that much i'd rather just sit in my little like office and get things that i like done and yeah. try things and i like to fail silently like i like to like you know like really have like 
I like little tiny multiple failures. And barbering demands like no failure. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Zero failure. You know? I mean, you probably get a lot in the beginning, mm-hmm. but after you get really good at it, it's like you probably one in a thousand cuts, maybe. It's tough, man. It's tough. It's you like know? it's like you. Like, I feel like you don't learn anymore necessarily. You, you learn like after you've yeah. if you if you've cut in a, a thousand Asian dudes here, yeah. maybe th- a thousand black guys here, mm-hmm. a thousand white guys here. Yeah. Like, I feel like you, you're upset. <laughs> but I think it's also like. Just that constant demand for like, just every day you guys gotta be damn fucking successful. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like every situation. I think it just, I think for me personally, like, it just beats my ass sometimes. Like, yeah. and I think that other people, like, that's kind of what they seek. It's mm-hmm. like constant successes. You know? Yeah. Cause they're so small and they're so repetitive and, you know, it just happens every hour for some I mean, objectively, dude, I feel like it's just like dopamine. Because yeah. It's like, Thank you do a good job. I look great. All, yeah. Thank you. I look Which great. is fine. I, I wish. But I'm like, yo, I yeah, like you said, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm learning anything yeah. at that point. Because I'm like, you know? And it's like, I started so young that it's just like... And I thing is, I was already cutting hair before I even really started working. Yeah. So I was already kind of good at cutting hair. You started cutting kind of like 15 yeah, or some shit. 13, right? 13, really. like, yeah. I was cutting my own hair, my brother's hair, and cut little cousin's hair. And it's like... I already knew what I was doing when I walked into the, the school. Yeah. And then I was at school for like a third of the time and I, cause I was already working at a shop. So it's yeah. like, I was already doing customer's hair mm. like before I graduated. Part yeah. of it, you know? So it's like, that's just it's so interesting, dude, because like for people, especially in LA who get into barbering, they want to do it for forever. Mm-hmm. And like for you, like you started so young that you're like, I'm kind of, over it, even though I'm good at it. Yeah. Well, I started also without the social media aspect. We had yeah. the sidekick pictures or like the flip phone. Yeah. We were doing it on Facebook, and I like. Yeah. We had to like take our pictures on a real digital little camera, mm-hmm. and like, you know, so it was a whole different kind of thing. Where it's like I was in between two generations of like, what it is like. Yeah. Because right now, like, I look at these this new stuff, and it's like so weird. It's Dude, like, there's people who cut, who record every single haircut. Yeah. Every which is super haircut. unnecessary and they also demand they expect you to believe that like like every haircut is like gonna look picture perfect yeah which is absolutely not true there's some mm. people with fucked up hair bro. <laughs> there's some people with like no chance of having like i'm just gonna manage the situation rather than like sure. make you like a whole new person mm. for, you know it's like of course i can make you feel better about yourself yeah. but if you have no managed like Thinning spots, hairlines, like be realistic. You yeah. know, some people come into the shop and they're like, I want this. And it's like, bro, you are not Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Be, like, so I think that kind of like fucked it up for me too. Cause I'm like, people have these weird expectations of what you should be doing. Yeah. And, and, and like basically bald. Yeah. And they're just like getting the fibers and like, you, like I went to this barbershop one time before. I started going to you pre-pandemic, mm-hmm. and this guy came in, and he was like, he looked like he had no hair, bro, and he came in for this, like, cut, and he was like, let me get that fresh fade, bro, and I'm like, what fresh fade, bro? <laughs> like, you have no hair on you. Yeah, dude. And then, like, the haircut probably took, like, 10 minutes, mm-hmm. and the guy was like, wow, this is amazing, and, like, like paid $120 for this haircut, and I was just like, that took 10 minutes, dude. Yeah. And the barber was just like, yeah, you're welcome, man. And, but, like, I could just tell him that I was like, you can't do anything. Yeah. Like, it's, it's not really a 10 minute haircut. Yeah, they're that's... just searching that, like, that validation from someone, like, hey. Like, yeah, you know? for sure. I, like, dude, when we were, like, especially, um, you know, when you're new, when you, go, when you join a barbershop, like, one thing I would always do is, like, Newer guys, or just even like people that were in the shop, like if you knew that you had you either fucked up the haircut, or the dude just it just doesn't look good. <laughs> like sometimes it just doesn't look good, you know. Yeah. Everybody would have to be like, "Hell yeah, bro, that shit looks great." <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's literally how you feel like, yeah. when you walk out that door. And also, like one thing about being a barber is like. I'd say 75% of that shit is just you making somebody else feel good about themselves. Yeah. You know? I don't think I don't think I'm the best at that, but I think that my my 
whole skill with people is just I make people feel comfortable. Yeah. I'm not here to a like, lot of barbers are like therapists, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I can I can make Similar people spill, training, spill the right? beans, man. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? So people come in my in the chair, they're like just talking. I'm like, oh, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> you probably heard some crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People just they, they let it loose. It's, I think it's just it's relaxing and, and mm-hmm. it's like but it's also like because I do it at like either my house or like I come to people's houses. Yeah. And they feel comfortable. Yeah. That's another reason why I like the way I do it, because like yeah. at the shop it's just like hectic like in nature and like you got everybody else listening to what the fuck you're talking about and you got like, <laughs> all this bullshit going on yeah. so i'd rather like be in a, a more personal like intimate setting where i, I can like connect with somebody yeah that's how i kind of like like to approach like relationships is, like i'd rather be mm. one-on-one with somebody and like, yeah. actually have like a conversation i feel like that's why you like cutting like friends are most of the time yeah. like yeah. Not, not anyone else outside that circle yeah like i don't mind new people but again it has to be someone that like someone I trust connects me with yeah. because otherwise like if, if you gave me this recommendation I, I trust you that you're going to give me somebody that I yeah. can respond well yeah. to because you know? I've never had like I've had moments where like I get caught in these situations where like either like I got to cut somebody new and I never even knew it was about to happen like it just, he might be sitting in the room when I'm cutting my normal client mm. he might be a friend and he's just like I don't want to cut you <laughs> But I'm gonna take your money, you know. Sure. But it's like, dude, like I just either don't like their personality, and I, yeah. I, I it just it throws everything off. Like, yeah, I don't feel good about it. It ruins your vibe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that's how you get a bad haircut, like yeah. real shit. Like if you're making me feel uncomfortable, like you're weird. Like I've had people like, I remember I had a dude like, I cut my normal client, and while I'm cutting my normal client, his homie's standing right behind me the whole time, yeah. and I'm like. Can you not stand behind me? Like, who stands behind somebody <laughs> while they're like, yeah, yeah, that's weird. No one, yeah, yeah. So it's like you know, weird vibes like that. I don't really like like yeah. new, all that shit. I've had moms, like I have to cut a kid, and their mom is just same thing right here. And I'm like, does somebody stand next to you when you're working? Like, that doesn't make any sense. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So just like, let me do like, my how's that gonna bro. make me feel? Yeah, you're constantly watching me. So it's all about the vibe, man. But what is um? What does fashion do for you in the sense of like, for some people, like not, not including me, like mm-hmm. it's like they wear who they are mm-hmm. on them. Mm-hmm. Like they express their personality through what they wear. Yeah. And um, I guess for you, I feel like you always have like a style that I don't really um, can relate to. It's like, it's like, it's, like, I wouldn't wear the stuff that you wear. Yeah. Even though, but I really appreciate and admire the things you wear. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And um, I guess, like, like do you express yourself through, like, fashion? What does fashion mean to you? Um, You know, I'm not one of those people that really... I do in some ways, but I don't know. I think it's more of, like, a shell for me rather than, like, it's like a skin, I guess. Mm. If that makes sense? I don't, I don't know what you mean. Like, some days I put things on more as, like, if I'm not feeling good, it just makes me feel like I don't have to, like, work too hard to, like, even speak to somebody. And that, fashion for me could be, like, the hoodie and Mm. the sweats. Sure. And that might be how I want to be communicating outside. Yeah. Like, don't, either it could be don't talk to me or, like, it's fucking raining. Don't talk to me. (laughs) But it could be, like. And then other days, like, if I'm going out, it, it could be, like, just, like, I do want people to compliment me. Yeah. Or I do want people to, you know, but I think right now, my current state is, like, I'm kind of at this, like, weird crossroads because I don't really feel very, like, um, inspired by too much stuff. Not to say that shit isn't cool. Yeah. I just don't feel, like, involved in a certain style. So, right mm-hmm. now, I'm kind of just, like, on some, like, I'm just kind of wearing whatever. And I'm <laughs> okay. kind of just, like, whatever. I'm not really trying to, like, I think that's what, also why I'm trying to make my own stuff because I just want to yeah. feel, like, I made this for me to be translated. This is like a great way to look because um, it's comfortable. Yeah. And it's trying to like cross some lines, but you're going to feel comfortable. You know, a lot of things right now, I feel like are like, we're in this weird space where people are like putting on costumes. Like a lot of people <laughs> see. I'm serious. The like, fashion shows? Well, no, like, like fashion, who, who, see, would, who the fuck would Well, the thing about the that fashion that. shows is, like, that's cool. That's, like, kind of, like, that's okay. That's where it's supposed to happen, I feel like. Yeah. And I get, like, sometimes it's, it is kind of wild. Um, 
some motherfuckers just have money and they don't know what they're doing and they're just putting shit on. <laughs> that's cool. But also, like, I think that a lot of people, like, they're trying to fit into these, like, weird, like, bubbles of, like, a pers- personality. Like, mm-hmm. because I wear this, I'm this type of person. And this, It's like, no, like, who are you? Can you go outside and just wear normal shit mm-hmm. and still be that person? Like, you know, if you can't go, out, you like, if, you, if somebody, let's say somebody wears, like, the most eccentric outfit, like, could you, could, could they be perceived as, like, what they're trying to be with all this craziness going on? It's almost like, a, it just feels like a costume to me. Like, sure. People just put on these things and they, they're not, like, really, like, that interesting, sure. I guess. Like, it's just more like, are you really that interesting? Sure. Um, so I, I mean, I feel like those people are just trying to chase, like, what they want to be. Because, like, there's people in Hollywood who walk the red carpet, bro, who, like, um, they don't have like an identity, so therefore they're gonna buy like a Gucci suit. Yeah, and then you you look at them and you're like, bro, you, yeah, you shouldn't be wearing that. But you also see the guy who's wearing Gucci shoe, and I was like, exactly, that's you, yeah, you know, it fits. You it know fits. what I'm saying? So I think we're having a lot of that like imbalance in like I guess people's style because they're wearing they're wearing the fashion rather than the style. Yeah, know, there's no, there's not a lot of style going on. So. It's kind of hard to, I don't really be popping out in the review, so like when I do, it's very like, pretty subtle. I like being subtle, yeah. but I like it because like, I'm not really trying to draw attention to the shit. Like yeah. My whole idea with like the philosophy on like just designing is just like, I want to make things that people don't feel like they, it's a costume. Mm-hmm. Like, I want them to feel like they can wear something every day. Yeah. And it's like, you know, the way you're wearing your sweats, Yeah. I want you to wear my sweats because you feel comfortable in them. Yeah. Know? Not because you feel like I'm making some sort of statement. Sure. You know? Because that's how you kind of get a polo. You wear a polo t-shirt but so does the rich man up the hill. You yeah. know? There's a reason why that happens. It's like, it's not a costume. It's literally just like, it's a good one. you pick the polo t-shirt yeah. because it's comfortable yeah. and you want to feel like a certain way in that shirt. Yeah. You aren't going to wear the Target shirt for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that it's not a good t-shirt, Target shirt. Yeah. But it's like, you bought the polo because you, it makes you feel a certain type of way. Mm. It doesn't make you feel like a rich man up, up the street. It just makes you feel like, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, any kind of situation, like that type of shit. Rather yeah. than like, I'm buying the the Balenciaga jacket that mm-hmm. just says Balenciaga. Why'd you do that? You know what I'm saying? Mm. When you could have just bought a black hoodie. <laughs> You know, it had the same yeah, type of like yeah. energy. A hundred percent less expensive. Like yeah, <laughs> but I'm saying if you if you knew how to like whether it be like you knew how to put it together, but or if it or just, you just, just like rock you you yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so how can I like kind of get into people's heads like that with my stuff? It's kind of the main mm-hmm. idea. Is like I keep telling uh, Rocky, my partner, like Shouts I'm really not trying to do. Yeah, shout out to Rocky, my boy. Where are you at, bro? You're yeah. supposed to be here. <laughs> I, I just keep telling them, like, I, the whole idea is not to make something that's, like, really um, trying to turn heads. Mm. I mean, as exciting as that is, it's happening every all the time. Mm. What's the, I guess, game plan of getting people to understand and want to, like, get that polo shirt or get that heavy piece of clothing that, like, makes them feel that way? Like, how 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 does that happen? I think it's just... We gotta tell a story, you know, and that's that's kind of one of the things where I've been kind of not hesitant, but kind of prolonging the process of like a launch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm kind of just still trying to find like a story, mm-hmm. like within myself that like makes sense to mm-hmm. me, and then I could just like run with it. Well, where does heavy come from? Like, I mean, heavy is is our names. Like, my last name is Levi, mm-hmm. and his name is Good Old. Mm-hmm. Good Old. <laughs> Rocky game yeah. fucking up right now, bro. <laughs> it's Rocky. But it starts with, it, his Japanese name starts in H. Sorry, Rocky. It's the old fashioned um, um, But yeah, it's our names combined. And that's not really like the story. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is. But like I said, the main thing is, is it's looking towards the future. It's well, not. Well, how do you want people to feel when they wear your clothing because I guess for example like when I wear when I wear Lululemon right I 
I, I'm like, I know most of the time I'm going to be working Like a out. bad bitch. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, like, I, most of the time I know, like, oh, I'm going to want to work out. And I feel like, uh, like, that's what a lot of people who are um, really well off mm-hmm. wear. And I'm just like, okay, I feel like I feel somewhat well off and fit. Yeah. Even though I might not be. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So some people might feel that way. Yeah. I don't know. When I wear... Um, I don't know, some Nike clothing, I'm just like, I feel like an athlete, mm-hmm. right? So if I'm wearing a like Nike pair of shoes, yeah. it's either I feel like cultured because like a lot of people are into Jordans, all that stuff. Yeah. Even though I might not be a, a huge proponent of like, I'm not a skater guy or mm-hmm. like whatever, uh, or Vans, right? Vans is like a huge skating market, yeah, right? Yeah. And so like, oh, I don't know, I feel like a little bit of culture there. Mm-hmm. So like, I guess like, what's your goal in the sense of like, how do you want to make these people feel? Because like, that's the story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I still haven't decided yet. Sure. Um, I think I'm still trying to find that out, but that's why we're really trying to like make some like very simple products that kind of spring from very like simple ideas, mm-hmm. and then figure out where we're where we're going. I think it, like I think the language is gonna find itself. Yeah. But we're trying to be doers right now. That's like the main thing is just being a doer. Yeah. And not trying to. I think if we keep see the thing is we were trying to be like in that headspace like what is it that we're trying to do in this what do you mean like like the question that you asked almost like how how are we trying to make people feel sure and then it kind of felt like a marketing move or something. Mm-hmm. and that kind of got like it sucked <laughs> it's like i think it's like it's definitely a great mindset to have at all times but um it's just like we're regular dudes you mm-hmm. know we're regular guys and we've like literally been working jobs our whole lives mm-hmm. you know I think that's like at the end of the day we're trying to like make something for people like like us, mm-hmm. but that people that kind of fall into a better space, kind of a little bit later in life. But what does that mean? You know, we also want to reach other people, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I guess people that are trying to find something, and it's new. Yeah, you know, that's the whole thing. I think that's the main thing. Is like, like I said, I don't want to be have a nostalgic mindset when I'm yeah. creating things. I definitely don't want to be futuristic sure. and like the space wave stuff. Yeah. That's definitely one of our ideas, like moving towards the future. Mm. Go towards the future, don't look backwards, yeah. and like have a more like forward thinking mindset. Yeah. There's some like ironic shit though. Like, what's that movie with the, the boots that like lace up by themselves? I like uh, Back to the Future. Back to the Future, right? So like, oh shit, like I'm gonna make these dope ass like shoes or whatever yeah. that like lace up themselves, but also that movie happened so long ago. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean even like in the in the in the sixties, you know, um it's uh the space race. Yeah. And it's these crazy ideas, like people were making like insane ideas that we about the future, about right now. Yeah. I mean, Fahrenheit 451, bro. Yeah. You know, like, like shit like This that. is all about, it was all about time, like, right now. Like, yeah. 2020 and, you know, 20, not even past 2040. Yeah. There's nothing past that. Yeah. Even uh, iRobot was 2020, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. Was it was, like, 2022. Yeah, it was, I, like, iRobot was taking place, like, right now. Oh, wow. And it's, like, this looks exactly the same, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I, that's what I'm saying. Is like, at what point do we start thinking differently and yeah. start having an approach of, like, Oh, so maybe that might be the story. It's like, I want people to feel like when they wear this stuff, Mm -hmm. they're like a new thinker. Mm -hmm. They have an idea of like what the future is going to be like and how to, how to just like, these are the people that are wearing this. And the other thing is like, we're, we're, we really want to get into like moving our, our stuff like more towards like tech companies. Mm -hmm. Like, so like one of my biggest goals is like working with Apple to make like, not make a product, but kind of design the, the aesthetic to the product, or like the look of their product. Like if I have some headphones or like, or work with like a car company who I, I help, you know, kind of uh, develop ideas for their interiors. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So how can I put design into like a more functional sense for like the companies that are doing like new EVs, mm. you know? Yeah, well, that's a, that's one of the best commercials that I ever, I ever watched. Uh, Steve Jobs had this commercial think different was the slogan yeah, yeah. you know and like that's what it is like yeah. it's just meant to be evolving exactly you know yeah. and also like when you have an apple like most people will have an iphone for a reason you know it's not because it's like the best camera no. or the best phone because objectively it probably is not 
That shit right? changed the game. The story know? changed the game too, yeah. you know? Yeah. And they put it on the map because like they wanted to do things that were not hit in the box mm-hmm. at the time, yeah. you know? Um, I don't know if it's the exact story, but I read Steve Jobs' biography and like, dude, this dude was fucking tripping on like acid and shit. And he was like, what if a phone didn't have buttons? Mm-hmm. Our phones don't have buttons, yeah. guys. You know? Yeah. You know, shit like that. And I just, like the clothing market, I feel like any market has something yeah. that doesn't exist yet there, yeah. you know? And it's just like, what is the value that it makes other people feel? Mm-hmm. Because objectively, you could get any bitters for a cocktail. Mm-hmm. Objectively, you could wear any clothes to make you warm. Objectively, you can have any shoes to prevent you from like, you know? Yeah. So it's like that aspect of it. It's, it's the feeling that people get from having these prop bags. Yeah. You know? Because objectively, you could get anything to do that job. Yeah. And it could be the cheapest thing. You could go to Ross tomorrow and get all your clothes. Absolutely. And that shit could last you forever. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think it's... And you awesome. could go look damn good doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. No doubt at all. Oh, shit. I'll be at Ross sometime for underwear at least. Dude, uh, well, yeah, not, not... I mean, bro, there's fucking Calvin Klein. In yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? You, you know what I'm saying? But there's other white t-shirts. Why do you... You know, we pick Calvin Klein. I'm the same way I pick Calvin Klein too, but... Yeah, I gotta get the cop Klein. Like, Why though? You know, I mean, they told the story. You know, they I know. told the story that like you're fucking sexy when you were sure. You know, that yeah. was their whole campaign. Like, yeah, you look like Mark Wahlberg. Uh, yeah. Dude, Mark Wahlberg looked hot as fuck with his <laughs> Calvin Klein's on, bro. I'll give him that. Yeah, dude. So uh, you went through this injury uh, a oh, year yeah. ago now. Yeah, it is a year and a half. You're doing some dumb shit in San Diego. Sure. Yeah, so like some people have this injury that lasts like a long time and you kind of bounce back from it. Oh, kind of, right? Yeah, it's, it's like there's the scars. I've been wearing, I'm wearing my eye cream. Yeah, now, so. and your foot's like relatively good. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Basically, Gabe fell off a, a some motorbike. Yeah. Like not making the best decisions yeah. and he hurt himself pretty badly. With alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what's your process for like, I guess, like coming back to it? Because like, dude. I have my dad tore his MCL or ACL scheme, right? Yeah. And it really affected fucked with him like mentally, right? Yeah. Absolutely. As well as like physically. Physically is a like, given. Like you have to heal and take yeah. some time. But I don't know, from my experience of just like hanging with you sometimes, like it seems like you took it pretty well and like got relatively better quickly. Yeah. And without a ton of like I guess, like, mental depression from, like, your body not working and stuff. Nah, yeah. I mean, like, it was, well, that was such a weird, like, hey, shout out my girl. Shout out for taking care of me. Um, and my mom. Uh, I think it was just, like, it definitely hit me, for sure. Because <laughs> it was fucking, it was stupid. It was, like, super avoidable. Um, but I think it was, like, it was more of like a, I changed my mindset immediately. Like I was like, I was like drinking a lot, like just that whole time. Cause it was like after the pandemic mm-hmm. and we, I had been like drinking the whole year, like just not like super, just wake up and drink. And, and you know, I'm still like working out and doing this, but it's like, I come home and I drink with the homie yeah. and just kind of chill out and I think, you know, that trip was crazy, first of all. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, like, after the accident, I was just kind of, like, if I sit here and, like, feel bad about, like, especially my face. My face was, like, mm-hmm. fucked up. Like, it was really bad. Uh, I was, like, damn, am I going to, like, look all messed up? But mm-hmm. I was, like, the only thing I could really do is, like, get up and, like, A, keep working out mm-hmm. like, as soon as I can. Yeah. Um, and also like just get out the house immediately like right when i feel it pop like physically possible yeah to get out the house i left the house like i um i got a cane mm-hmm. and like one of those little knee scooters like so you, og bro yeah i got a cane <laughs> i got a boot and a, one of those little scooters that you scoot yourself in yeah and i went i went to go eat like i think like a week and a half after my accident yeah my shit was all like it was nasty but i was like I don't get out and like 
keep feeling sorry for myself because I was like sitting on the couch for like almost a week and a half, like mm-hmm. just like day in and day out, falling asleep, waking up, just not moving. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I stay here, like I know I'm gonna get like into like I'm gonna be like just in bad shape. Mm-hmm. So I'm eating and this and that and watching TV and nothing's happening. And mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, I gotta get up, and I just kept getting up and doing something every single day. Mm-hmm. That was like the main thing. And then like I would sit outside. I think it was just like little like small rep- reps of like being about getting up. Like mm-hmm. otherwise, if you don't. Like I'm saying, like, it's like, I feel like a lot, guys, especially, bro, we just kind of sit in our sickness a lot of times. Like, we'll get sick and we'll just be like, like, be like big ass babies, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm guilty of that. We all like to get taken care of. Sure. Right? <laughs> but I, at this, I was like, you know, I have like this really physically, like, no, it's on my face. Like, mm-hmm. I can't avoid it. Yeah. I can't avoid anybody seeing this. Yeah. Know? So it's like, I had to go out there and like let people see me and like mm-hmm. just explain myself and also like kind of hold myself accountable for the fact that this wasn't like a accident where it was like somebody did this to me like I did this to myself, myself so yeah. it's like what am I supposed to do like sure you know so it was just more about that it was more like accountability in the situation that helped me like was it like a wake up call or anything oh yeah it was more like don't do stu- like not don't do stupid shit but like understand like I can't do the same stupid shit like, yeah. all the time. Right? How did it feel though? Because like uh, when I fell, <laughs> no, I mean I've sure heard you might have not felt it though. I definitely felt it. <laughs> so yeah, but like for me, uh, for the longest time, um, I felt like I, I'm invincible. Yeah, in, exactly. In terms of like, oh my body, I'm young, my mm-hmm. body's whatever, and I've had a couple like elbow knee and whatever yeah. industry in, uh, injuries and mm-hmm. i'm just like oh wow like you're not invincible like, yeah you get one body yeah you know and how do i make it last as long as humanly possible mm-hmm. because just like life you you only get one fucking body to go through this whole process with and it's up to you to make it as healthy as possible yeah because yeah. some people have knee problems and they could have been avoided. Some people have scars that mm-hmm. they could have been avoided. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that that is the right way to put it. I definitely felt like at that point I was invincible mm-hmm. in, in like the most back of my mind way. Like it was in the back of my head. Like I'm never going to, I have been in car accidents. Mm-hmm. I've had like small surgeries, like, and you know, I've like cut my toe, almost cut my toe sure. off, and it's like no one's gonna see my toe. You know? <laughs> it's like I've literally almost cut my toe off. Like, Did it fuck with your self confidence at all? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Like I had to go out. It was more like, like I just, what am I supposed to do at that mm-hmm. point? You know, and I think it still kind of fucks with me sometimes. Like I mm-hmm. still like, but that's why like all like I have a face routine now. You know, mm-hmm. like, I have a, a, a super solid face routine, and that's why my scars are like have gone away. A lot. Yeah, I can I can barely yeah. tell. And then it's like um, I keep my hair like as well groomed as I can. Yeah. yeah, like if I have to go somewhere, like I'm shaving my face sure. because I have to keep it all like clean. You yeah. Know? Um. So it definitely like it definitely still like an insecurity, mm. but it's not like something where I'm like I'm not gonna approach people mm. or anything. But and I think I definitely see when people look at me. You know, they look like this little like because I still have like a shade of darkness sure. in the right light. It's still yeah. there. You know, so it's little stuff, but. It's definitely not something that like hinders me, but in the beginning, hell yeah, I'd be like, damn, I don't even want to go out, but I was like, let's just go, like, let's do something. Yeah, because I remember we went to the oh, yeah. white party. Oh, yeah. That's hard. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. And it was still like real yeah, yeah. dark. That man. was when it was new, yeah. That was still new. Yeah, that was, was hard, like, bro. I was like, damn, games out like yeah, that. Shout that was out, hard, bro. bro. But that's like one of the things where I was like, my girl was asking me, like, are you sure you want to go? Because I think even my foot, my foot was still hurting. Um, you were limping. Like, yeah, yeah. You were exactly. limping hard, bro. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's like, but you have to like, kind of like, you have to go. It's otherwise it's like, if I don't go, then I'm going to keep reaffirming that insecurity yeah. and being like. That was a while too. That was Halloween 2020, 2020. Yeah. So it's like, at what point do you, you know, it's like, you can't indulge those kind yeah. of insecurities. But that's dope. That's my face, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but that's dope that it got you like those routines to do those uh like actions for yourself yeah yeah exactly because dude there's so many people who who 
never had like an um, accent like you do. Yeah. But they don't have any face routine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they don't keep themselves perfect and yeah. all these things. But like if you do those things, if you work out, if yeah. you shape and line up your beard mm-hmm. properly, if you do all these things, like you might feel so much better about yourself. Yeah. See, the thing is also is like now I'm like, I can be like fit mm-hmm. and well groomed and then they'll be like, what's that scar? And I get to tell like a little, a little dope story. I can tell a fake story. I can be like, I got attacked by a lion. You know? <laughs> it can be funny. You know, now it's like, I don't feel insecure about it. It's more like, yeah. this kind of sparked something a little bit more positive in me. Sure. I think if I would have sat in it, it would have been like, oh, well, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, no, yeah. you know, I don't want people to feel sorry for me. I want them to, I really have everybody laugh at me yeah. in the situation that I can laugh at myself sure. because it was a dumbass decision. Uh-huh, it was exactly. a dumbass decision. So it's like, okay. Well, I'd rather yeah. have, but I'm like, oh, well, now I'm, I'm fucking in shape. I My face is clean and smooth and yeah. uh, my lips ain't chapped and all that I stuff, know. you know? So it's like, why can't I'm I? I'm winning, bro. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? So I don't feel bad about it at all. But it was fun. Yeah. That was a crazy experience that you yeah. went through. I, was, I saw the whole, like, yeah. process of it. And I was <laughs> like, damn, bro. Yeah. What do you call it, dude? So, like, last time we were on the podcast, you were, uh, you didn't have, like, any shirts or hats mm-hmm. or anything. Not yet. Like, physical yet. No. And now you got some physical shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. How does it feel to, like, having, like, an idea it feels, it feels turn good. into, like, an actual product? Uh, even though, like, you haven't, like, launched your yeah. site or anything like that. Like, you have a physical thing that you have thought in your brain, and now it's, like, a physical object. It feels good, man. It feels, like, it's a little intimidating only because I know I gotta, like, I gotta keep on going. Mm-hmm. Holding yourself accountable is like super important. Yeah. Um, but I love it. I think it's like looking at them and when you first look, especially when you first get them, it's like, this is real. This yeah. is like something that I can like, you know, go off of and continue yeah. doing. It feels amazing, honestly. Like doing it with the homie is like really cool just because I have someone that like I can share it with mm-hmm. really like, you know, strongly. Um, and then also just like all of my friends just like like me. Mm-hmm. cool uh, and like getting compliments I, I, I also feel like you have friends who would tell you the truth yeah 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 definitely like, versus you know, like, like we were talking about the shirt like the problem with the tea is like that's super um, important to me because I, I really like yeah, you quality. Know, yeah I'm serious about quality um, and I want it to be like especially coming from me I want it to be like really at the forefront I mean it's a representation of who you are yeah. and how you uh, how you approach like you know, the way that you do things. So, um, like, I was telling my friend, one of my friends, um, I was, like, walking on the street and somebody complimented my hat. And I was like, yo, somebody complimented the hat. I was like, yo, that shit got me super hyped. Like, that's crazy. I got it, dude. Yeah. It's something so it's like, that you made like, that you did. That's, yeah. like, that wasn't in existence without you. Exactly. So, it was like, I was like, damn, that's crazy. Like, that's, like, it's the smallest thing. But I think it's, like, I'm consistently getting those and, it kind of drives you to like do something new and like, mm-hmm. but I try not to put a lot of pressure on myself to like do uh, do too much. So, but I definitely want to start like being. I on guess a- what's that? What's the I guess line though? Because everyone has your too much might be different than my too much. Absolutely, I think I mean different levels of productivity, man. Um, but like, does it matter though? Like, why should you even have that line? Why do Why don't you just like work as much as you need to to get to where you need to be i think it's more like a day-to-day thing like Mm -hmm. i'm never gonna push myself to um like overextend to try to like i think at some point when you're like creating you kind of like reach a point where you overextend to try to satisfy somebody else's ideas Mm -hmm. of what you should be doing sure like if if your initial initial idea starts coming together and then you're like whoa say this about this or mm. you start having other thoughts of like whether somebody said something or um, maybe one of your doubts it's like looking at a painting too long you start looking at the bad, all the bad things about it you know sure. um, so I always try to like give myself a limit every day of like I'm gonna do a little bit of this and then stop mm. and then when I feel it again I'm gonna make sure I just do it um, like consistently sure because a lot of people think like consistency is just like you're just going hard all the time like but it's like i think discipline has like two different sides like you know consistency is 
because like you do it, but like if I said, oh my word, if I said like um, the consistency part comes down to like I'm gonna do something for thirty minutes every day and then stop. Mm -hmm. The discipline it should be you're gonna stop at thirty minutes and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rather do it every day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, some people will say consistency and discipline are, I'm going to do it every day and I'm going to not stop doing it till I finish. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, like, do, give it, a, do exactly what you say you're going to do and stop mm -hmm. and then wait. Because it also does take discipline to stop. Yeah, it does. It does. Because then you start fucking everything up. Like, Ooh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, to a certain point, until you yeah. kind of can reach that level of, like, at what point is my breaking point where I, I just kind of, like, stop going wacko or, yeah. like, weird on, on the situation, you know? It could be, like, you making a drink and mm -hmm. you're, like, trying to make something new, but then, like, you, you don't stop and you're just, like, yeah. like you know? Yeah. But it could have been perfect halfway through. Yeah. So I think it's trying to understand that and I've been giving myself like doses of everything because mm -hmm. I'm not used to like constantly um, just like designing, you know, of course, like I have yeah. like spurts of inspiration. And this yeah. Stuff. What's your creative process? Because um, like now you have like a sewing machine now, mm -hmm. like do you just get shit like first? I write stuff down. What um, do you mean? Like, you be write, like I like, want this sweater like, with these yeah, things on. Be, like shirt with blue and red or you know i'll write like the text i want on my notes or this and then i'll go back and be like all right well kind of like this I, I don't even know where that idea came from like, sure you know i'll be i might have smoked earlier that night and i have the i think it's the greatest idea and i'll be like what did i even write yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's look like, at the next day yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> like, who am i talking to but it's it, i think it I like I like that process until I can get a more better a kind of like a idea of like exactly where everything is coming from because yeah. sometimes it's like like a lot of references which like the late and great Kanye he's not dead <laughs> <laughs> but his legacy might be yeah uh, I still love him though he's yeah, he's just got it. But dude, there's people at F45 right now who are just like, some of them are like quitting and doing whatever because like some people will be playing some Kanye shit. Really? People are sauced though. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he's always said like, he tried to not, you know, that's why he kind of like was not on the internet. He just tried to like not deal with like referencing. And that goes back to my idea of like new, yeah, you know? Innovation shit. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like one thing that he's always been like a... Uh, yeah, a proponent of he's like, yo, I'm trying to reinvent the world. Yeah, and like that sounds ridiculous. It does, of course. <laughs> and especially someone who's like very confident when they say that I'm trying to reinvent the world, I'm yeah. trying to change the fitness industry. Yeah. Like, and most people who say those outlandish things, people just think that they're crazy. Yeah. When in reality, maybe they just have a vision that you do not see. Yeah. They project their own doubt onto others. You know. You know. Like, it's like the thing is also too is like. I never deny that I'm just like a normal ass motherfucker. Like, mm. I don't ever try to like create this um, scenario where I'm doing something like new. Maybe that's bad. Maybe it's like a lack of my own confidence. Mm. But I don't want to like. Sometimes I don't want to have this speeding up of my process mm. and trying to create this like narrative for somebody to say like. Are you, you know, I just want to have... I, I mean, objectively, I don't know if you could say you're a normalized guy. Yeah. It's like, you're doing things that not normal people do, you know? And, like, yeah. like um, I don't know, David Goggins once said this when he was, like, running and stuff like that. Or someone said this about him. He's, like, uncommon against uncommon men. And, like, the reason is because he does uncommon, uncommon things. Yeah. You know, if you want to be successful or be a great business guy and stuff like that, it's like you you have to do things that other people don't want to do to become who you mm -hmm. want to be. You know, so like you saying that might be just because you want to be humble or just like you're afraid of like the the future of like fuck, like what I'm gonna have to do. Yeah, yeah. But objectively you are doing the things that you need to do to yeah. be where you're saying that you wanna be, which is not normal. Yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you might be yeah. feeling that way about yourself. Yeah. 
And like likewise for myself, like I, I, I feel those feelings all the time. Yeah. You know, about just like I'm just a normal guy, all these things. But like if you analyze the objectiveness of what you actually are doing, mm-hmm. most people are not doing that. That's true. I guess it's just I like I think you know what it is, is like I find myself having the best time when I'm just doing normal shit. So I I, I, I kind of define myself as like normal. Like I like just going to like Gaikaku and just drinking beer. Sure. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like, you know, eating with the, my friends and, and yeah. like hanging out with my girl and this and that. So it's like, I never really like. But every people, everyone does that. Yeah. So I guess those are, eh, I guess not yeah. everyone does that. But like a lot of people do that. Yeah. So I, I guess that's, I like, I like to soak that in and be like, hmm. I think that when I step away and I'm on my own is when I feel not normal. Mm. That's cool though too. It's yeah. like you feel it. I don't know. For me, I feel like sometimes I feel like different. I'm living different lives in that aspect. Yeah. It's like oh, this is what people perceive me as when I go out, and then yeah. I, I'm in my own little world. I example like right now we're having mm-hmm. this conversation in, in like the studio that I created. Yeah. And like, I I just if it, it feels different. You yeah. Know? Like and then versus like me eating. Uh, Chipotle with five bros at the, the yeah. gym, you know? I mean, even, like, <laughs> this conversation feels different than the one we were having on the couch. Exactly. You know so, it's like, I, I definitely feel what you mean. Uh, like, you know, when we're when you're doing something, like, I, I, I hate this fucking word sometimes, but, uh, like, intent, the intention of it is kind of, mm. like, what creates. Why do you hate it? It's just overused. I mean, so many words. Like, <laughs> it's, like, so many words. Like, just these, uh... Pseudo, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, I don't know, but Hus- you know what I mean? hustling. I hate yeah. the word hustling, yeah. You know? yeah. Okay. Like, stuff that's like has gaslighting, yeah. <laughs> I hate the word entrepreneur, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate it's you know, like, you know, I think like that's, that. I think sometimes it feels good to fall into the, the, the space of normality, you yeah. Know? Like, damn, like, can I just be a normal guy, like, sure, I don't want to be, but it's, I think it's a little bit more comforting, but yeah, I, I it's like when you're doing something with a lot of intention, it just feels like you're kind of in your own, like. Mm-hmm. bubble mm-hmm. and it feels different like, I feel like after we're done with this it's like we're gonna take a deep breath and just be like now we can shoot this shit yeah. for real you know yeah. what I'm saying we also have the privilege of doing that though mm-hmm. because like there's a lot of people in other areas of the world who don't have the 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 privilege to like sit down and talk about um, deep meaningful thoughts and goals you know they yeah. are just focused on making a living and eating food yeah. And that's a reality. That's true, man. We're in a good place, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm trying not to think about that shit, bro. <laughs> it's, it's just real. It's real. It's real. It's super real. It's I mean, real. It's like, dude, like, just because we were born in California, like, yeah. we have been granted a winning hand that it's up to us to see if, like, we make that hands like worth it like like are we gonna fold when we think we're gonna lose but in yeah. reality it's like we got the the yeah. pocket aces bro it's true you know when i was when i was a teenager i used to tell my mom like and stuff like and she'd always and she would always say things like that like uh yeah like, people have a race i'd be like but i was born in california on planet earth in the valley right here I don't have a word. <laughs> like, I'd always say that to her. I'd be like, "Are you trying to tell me about somebody else who has a word?" It's like, because she would always try to convince me that like things are good. Because I was when I was a teenager, man. I just I wanted I had I just wanted like everything at once. Like, sure. I always wanted like I just wanted I remember like I just wanted my own apartment. I wanted my car that was mine. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I had a job. I wanted I just wanted everything to come. Mm-hmm. And she was like, "You know, you're complaining about someone that's not fucking." real yeah and i'd be like i mean it's i was real. like i think it's more like i was like it's possible you know yeah, but <laughs> you're like, complaining about shit that is real to you yeah exactly that's what i would say i'm you like know. this shit this is this is what i think is yeah. possible like if i was in a certain situation i would i don't think it would have come to my mind until it was really in my face but yeah right now this shit is in my face every single day so. well everyone's worst thing that's happening to them is the worst thing that's happening yeah. to you dude. like it's like i don't know what i I don't. I don't know the experience of being a slave in the yeah. country. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it sounds shitty, but maybe like me getting dumped at fucking twenty two or whatever by some chick might create that the same feeling. <laughs> I feel that it's and, all perspective, and, and, and 
And that's shitty to say. Yeah, but, but it's, it's also like, like more so, not more so, but it's like, I think it's more like the exposure, like about people coming up in the country, in this country, even if they come from another country or even in their own country, it's like, they might be on the street selling fruit or they might, you know, be in these shitty situations, but they see the, Bigger the rich man. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or, you know, or they see, yeah, some people have this automatic click, but they might see a motherfucker in a nice car. Yeah. And they're like, I want that. Yeah. You know, and that might not be a material thing. It might be like the way that he made me feel about seeing him or her or, you know. I want me to feel that way. Or I want to, yeah, I want to make, I want to be the person that makes other people feel that feel way. Feel that way. And I think that that's kind of what, like, what we have the privilege of being exposed to faster. Mm. But sometimes it's like, when you see like your hero or you see, um, you know, a situation, whether it be on TV or just like in your daily life, like you meet somebody, um, we have the, the kind of like privilege to be exposed to that immediately. Where it's like, like I said, like I got my like inspiration for like mag from my magazines or like even getting new clothes and the feeling it made me feel is like, I want to be around this all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, the kid that had never seen a piece of clothing before, besides like that one or two pieces, he's not really going to think about it. Yeah. Until he's just going to think about like, this makes me warm. Yeah. But it might be the, the silk scarf that he randomly finds on the street. That's like, I love this. Yeah. I want to be this person now. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's all in perspective of like what you're able to be exposed to at that moment and how it sparks you. So, but I feel what you're saying. I just feel like, there's so many stories of people just getting these little like crazy sparks, like random, younger, older people, like 65, meet somebody to have a conversation and just... Life changes. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and I don't know if you use the example 65, that's a whole nother lifetime. Yeah, it is, bro. bro. <laughs> I mean, dude, people do a lot, man, in no, like I five know. years, it's crazy. I know. It's like, I mean, like, I wasn't, I didn't watch the Golden Globes, but I was just reading I don't even know what the Golden Globes is. It's, bro. Uh, it's like the mini Oscars. Okay. Um, and I don't really watch the words, but like, there's a whole bunch of like comeback, like actors, people that like have been out of the business, not out of the business, but like not exposed. They're like child actors and people that had smaller bits, and now they have like they're getting awards, and mm -hmm. it's like most of them are like in their fifties, mm -hmm. forties, late forties, early fifties, sixties. It's like. Life can change, man. You know. Well, I, dude, I think Hollywood has a bad um, perception of like success because like so many people are like, "I'm gonna be this actor by 22 yeah. and like be whatever." But like, dude, how many movies are there old people in? Yeah, all of them. That's true. Like, there's an old dude, an old girl, like not old, but like 40s, 50s, 60s. There's the fucking grandma in there who might be killing it. I think it's more like longevity you know? wise. Like, people expect to. You want to have a, 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 a strong entry, but yeah. a, a strong exit, you know? That's the main thing. It's like, you don't ever want to be, like, just in and out. Yeah, you know? but I don't know. If you use your example of your barber friend. He got into barbering right now at mm -hmm. your age, mm -hmm. and that was his beginning. Yeah. And you're already 12 years deep, bro. Yeah. So, like, you put that in perspective, and you're like, wow, I'm just beginning. Yeah. Like, in terms of, like, heavy. You know, yeah. You're like wow, like Not I, yet. I, I didn't, I didn't have a physical thing a year and a half ago. Now you're right, and now I got hats and shirts, and I was like, that's a win. All right, so now what's next? You know, yeah. Like I guess for me too, like I had bottles with handwritten labels, and now I got legit ass labels on a website. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. What's next? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, ah yeah. Do, do you know what SEO is? Optimization, right? I didn't know what the fuck that was until two weeks ago, bro. <laughs> and like, apparently, it's a big thing in yeah, business. Yeah, it's humongous. It's huge, right? <laughs> they hire people for that. They, job. Yeah, I know. And so I was like, wow, this is something that I did not know ever existed. And like, this is huge for like a business. Yeah. And so like, it's like top of the list. Man. It's like you knock something out and you figure out like, I was like, okay, it's never like I'm good. Yeah. It's like what's next? Exactly. You know. And that's why all these, like, I guess, like, you look at Hollywood or actors and stuff, they're like, okay, cool, I made this, what's next? Mm -hmm. You know, you're never going to get that fulfillment of, like, I've achieved everything that I ever wanted to in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Because there's always going to be something that you want. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. It's never going to stop. Yeah. 
Um, we're always hoping it does, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Aren't you? You are. It's like, when I make this money, I'm going to be happy. Okay, that when I was 12 years old, I thought $10,000 was a lot of money. Right? And so I made $10,000, and now I'm like, uh, I'm not happy, you know? Yeah. So, like, so it, it's all, again, perspective in that yeah. aspect. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, yeah, I've had that before, too, where it's just like, or just, you know, having a little pillow of comfort in, in especially, like, financially, you're like, everything's going to be good now. <laughs> yeah, money's a weird thing. Because, money like, fucking uh, sucks. <laughs> money's a weird thing, dude, because, like, it's like, it's a tool to get you to where you want to be or how you want to feel after a certain extent. Because, like, in my opinion, like, if you make, like, $60,000 a year as, like, a single person, like, you should be able to be as happy as you want to be. Yeah. Um, just by, like, basic needs and stuff. But, like, say you get a raise to 250 k a year and, like, you just bought a car or you're buying all these things that you don't need, mm-hmm. right? And so now your new level of, like, necessities is, like, higher. And yeah. so, like, to tone down, to be able to, like, live below your means is so tough when, in, in, in those areas, that's why these millionaires and billionaires go bankrupt. Because yeah. they buy their billion-dollar mansion, you know, and you're like, oh, shit, I can't afford it. No. You know? Insurance, maintenance, all this. Yeah, man, I mean... Even like this past lottery, it's crazy. It's like a billion dollars. I don't remember like, you bought that ticket. I bought I bought ten tickets, <laughs> man. You know, I'm not saying I wouldn't want it. I'm just saying like I think it's crazy because I'm like, yeah, I think when you buy tickets like that, you kind of have like damn, I'm gonna get five million to friend over here. My mom's gonna she's gonna retire, and it's like I don't even know what I'd really do with that money. Yeah, like I don't really know. I can't imagine myself with like. What would I do with my day? Yeah. Like, do I just get up and... It's also the type of person where I was in an Uber. Yeah. Right? Uh, this was a year ago. I just remembered it. And he got into this, like, crazy lawsuit accident. He almost, like, died. And mm-hmm. someone crashed into him. And he got, like, 250K. Mm-hmm. Right? And I was like, that should last you a long time, right? He blew it in three months. He even told me the story. He was like, yeah, I went to Vegas. I did all these things. I, like, um, yeah. I bought this. I bought that. And... Like, that's just who he is, right? Well, so, yeah, it's going to elevate exactly who you are. I mean, yeah, it's gonna. It's basically just going to, like, money Money just shows, like, your true colors to some point, you know? And, like, that's a perfect example of, like, it showed, like, yo, he can't manage money. Yeah. Regardless, and he's but, not... Even, but it's, like, $750 million. I mean, I get you can blow it for sure. But what the fuck are you going to do with this? <laughs> like... What do you realistically... I mean, take do? off half of it for tax. No, I mean, like, a bi- it was a billion, so you're getting about 600, 600 million. Yeah. Did like, someone win it? Yeah, in Maine. In Maine? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. In Maine, of all places, yeah. bro? They don't Come need on. it. They, yeah. that, that'll buy the whole state of Maine, you know dude. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm looking at, I'm like, I'm always imagining myself, like, what, what do I do with this? Like, if I were to sit here and really think about it. I guess I would donate. <laughs> like, I would donate some. Uh, which, I guess, every lottery winner just oblig- obligatorily has to do. It's, uh, it's an obligation. You have to donate money. Um, give it to who you can, like, friends and family. And then it's like, you're still sitting on, like, minimum, like, $400 million. Mm-hmm. And people have that money out here like, that they worked for. A couple people, you know, that really have... Network. I would say it's a lot more than a couple people. Well, a good like, amount of people, yeah. A good yeah. amount of people have four hundred million dollars, you know. Um, but what the fuck am I doing? Like, if I really don't have like a crazy like skill, mm-hmm. or or you know, I'm not like Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's still working. Yeah, he's constantly having a four hundred million dollars. Like, it's refilling the tank. Yeah. At what point do I say like? I'm just gonna sit here and just spend this money for you know. Yeah. I don't know, like it's like, and it's like it's a literally it feels like a bottomless pit of money mm-hmm. until it's not. You know? Yeah, it's like, but even then, I don't know, like Floyd Mayweather, dude, he spent so much money on the clubs, all these things, yeah. all that. But again, his shit is constantly his tank is constantly getting refilled. Like, sure, he might spend a million, but he just made five. Yeah, you know, or 
you know, it's like, all right, well, I mean, I don't know, dude. I, I haven't experienced at no, that level. Whatever it's, scary, it's scary, though. It's scary to think about because you're like, oh, yeah. man. Like, but also, like, I, I'm not envious of it because, yeah. like, what is my, I don't know what my purpose is when I don't have to worry about anything like that. Yeah. You know, like, it sounds nice, but I don't know when you get there. I don't know if it is it probably because is. there's a ton of rich people who are super sad. Oh yeah, and I don't know if I want to experience the the grief and sadness they do because, like, dude, the amount of suicides that you see that are from very successful wealthy people. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Like the one that hit me the most is like Twitch. Mm-hmm. You know, like on paper it looked like he had everything. Yeah, like the wife, the kids, the house, the fame, the the status, the money. Yeah. And I'm just like what could possibly make you do that? Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't in this position, right? But, like, I feel like everyone has to have a hunger mm-hmm. to progress in some aspect. Yeah. Like, I was on the green in Santa Monica, you know, where they do acro yoga. Yeah. yeah. And some guy pointed me out, like, this billionaire. He, like, he's, he's, I think, the 10th richest person in the world. And, like, you wouldn't recognize him. Like, he's mm-hmm. just, like, a normal Just dude. a guy. Just a guy. And he's out here learning fucking acro yoga, bro. Yeah. Just trying to get better at something. Yeah. Trying to progress in some way. And I feel like we don't have that. Yeah. But that, that's what I'm saying, though, is, like, is, like, those people, their mindsets carry them to that spot. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that, that, that's where the money literally means nothing. It's, mm-hmm. like, there was no other option but for him to just be like that that's who he is Mm -hmm. he's not like he's naturally a billionaire person Mm -hmm. that's who he grew up as and like the lessons he was taught the environment yeah everything brought him to this moment Mm -hmm. you win the lottery you might be going from nothing to just everything yeah and i feel like that's so crazy such a crazy concept of like do you know any lottery winners i don't because like i would be i would love to talk to someone like yeah just because insane like it I want to hear a lottery success story because all we ever hear is lottery, just the demise of the lottery. Like, mm-hmm. Where's the successful person that says, I'm going to sit here and like really think about this. What am I going to do? Yeah. Because especially if they won like over a hundred million dollars. Yeah. It's like, dude, that's insane. Like, if I was making minimum wage or, or if I was even like a regular base salary of like 50, 60, you know, mm-hmm. it's like. Oh, here's a hundred million. Like you could either retire. <laughs> I can't even think about that, bro. Or you could like try to do something more. Like, yeah. Are you trying to make your make it into more? Or most people are not. They're just gonna be like, it's enough for my yeah. entire life. I'm exactly. just gonna spend what I exactly. need to spend. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, there's some people who like don't have the lottery that feel that way. The owner of uh, Kinkos, mm-hmm. he's like a billionaire. He was like, dude, like. If you do the math just with how many years I have left, like, there's no way I could physically spend this amount of money. Yeah. It's like, bro, I'm donating it left and right. There's, like, no way. And I'm just like, wow, that's mind-boggling me yeah. because of me trying to figure out how to pay, like, a $2,000 credit card. Payment. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like... <laughs> it's also, like, his mindset of, like, the way that he spends money, you know? Sure. So it's like, he could probably buy something. But he's wearing fucking 20-year-old jeans and a white t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, why do I need this? Yeah. But again, like someone who's come, it's just like it's such a fucking mindset. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. I'll definitely spend some money. Yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely just do some ridiculous stuff. Like. Yeah. Definitely buy a boat. <laughs> like I'd be that. Guy. Really? I'll I don't know about buy a boat. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a boat guy. Me either. I probably wouldn't even be in it. I'll <laughs> <laughs> probably never use just it. Just to say you have it. <laughs> fucking jet. Yeah. Like, yeah. Actually, you probably use jet. I use the jet. Yeah. 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 But the boat. <laughs> It'd be very rare to be like. <laughs> what are you uh, most excited for your life right now, bro? Like you got a lot of things going on. Obviously, there's yeah, this man. company. Um, you're still trying to figure out. I don't know if you're. Are you still trying to get like into like a fashion job type of deal? Uh, you're in some very uh, half hearted. Sure. I don't really. I'm just like I'm over that whole. Mm-hmm. I just can't even. I'm like a hundred percent on this brand. Um, uh, as hard as it is and like it's tough mm-hmm. but it's like I've kind of just been like that's what you're most um, yeah, for yeah. yeah and traveling man I'm just like oh yeah it's a, well, okay can you explain why Tokyo is Tokyo or Japan in general Tokyo mostly Tokyo Tokyo the I guess production fashion hub of the world to some people mm-hmm. 
Like, why is that? Because I hear that, like, I don't know, like, I hear acting is uh, in, in L.A. Mm-hmm. It's the cap- acting capital of the world. Right? Yeah. Or dance capital of the world. Like, why is Tokyo, like, so many people talk about, like, like... I would say, not, Tokyo isn't really, like, a fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more, like, just, like, uh, uh, it's just a very... When a culture reaches like Japanese culture, it just explodes. Like if they take it in, and they they enrich it a lot. Like they know how to enrich things. Mm. And it's super interesting. Like, what do you super, mean enrich? The culture it? in Japan is like super meticulous. So like mm. they're like they're making a cup, mm. and they're making a cup, bro. Like mm. the cup is being made. Like you know, what <laughs> I, mean? I don't know how else to say it. Like I wouldn't know how to say it the right way, but this cup. Made in the USA, yeah, is not the same as the one made in Japan. Mm-hmm. Like it's just what like mean, ten times. Know. Like the oranges being grown out there are yeah. crazy. Like the yeah. produce in Japan, yeah, it's the best fruit. I'm sh- I mean, this is what I've heard. Yeah, the best fruit, and it's super expensive for yeah. a reason. I mean, they're on an island first of all, but it's just like they're way better. Yeah, you know, they're meticulous about how they approach everything. So like, mm-hmm. so it's like production wise, I'd say like Japanese like denim is probably what they're most famous for. Okay. Um, like production wise, like they could shift overseas, is like, but you know they're using like centuries old like indigo dye mm. from like the plant. Mm. So like it's like a whole process to break it down, and they gotta soak it, and like it's getting hung dried and hand weaved, and it's mm. like the process is like, and it's like family generations, you know, sure. from like years and years and like hundreds of years like yeah. they were samurais and shit, you wow know? so it's like and it's a they're using the same process mm-hmm. they you know their hands are like dyed blue that's yeah. like one example i can give so why do you want to i guess go over there to promote heavy oh uh, i mean a rocky's japanese yeah um so this is just a connection there um but you know, i've just always kind of been like really interested in the culture yeah um but, but you you said you want to also go not just for the culture, but to like to elevate the brand. Oh yeah, I mean, Western things just get picked up a lot more um, over there. Yeah, enthusiastically than they do over here. So it's yeah, like fucking shit. Bro, it's weird because like a lot of places in Asia, dude, they they're just obsessed with like I guess like NBA, like basketball culture, yeah. skate culture, yeah. all these things. It's like when I went to um, Europe, like. They were just obsessed with like every movie that we have or anything mm-hmm. like that. And I was like, I don't know one European movie. <laughs> no. Because like I forgot there's like um I forgot there's a city in Poland that's like mm-hmm. very known for acting, but I've never like watched a Polish film. Yeah. You know, but like all these people in Europe, they know almost more movies than I do in the United States. And I'm just like, this is interesting. You know? Yeah. I think Western culture is just it's just super glamorous. Yeah. It's like, I mean, even, like, I don't know, if you, like, if you watch the Oscars, they'll have, like, foreign films, and it's like, these aren't American films. Like, <laughs> and they're getting a, a big-ass award. You know? Yeah. So they're getting, like, national, but they're, they're getting Western recognition, yeah. like, which is, like, out for movies, it's the highest movie out of Hollywood. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's like, but the thing is, with, like, or something like Squid Games, like, that yeah, got so much, yeah, like, recognition. That, but that was, like, crazy, like, for it to happen, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, like, uh, but with fashion, it's more like uh, you're getting like Paris. You know, mm-hmm. Paris is where it's at, like, at least like generally. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of shifting a little bit towards like a bunch of different places, like Milan uh, and stuff like that. But you know, like LA gets no love in fashion. Really? Yeah, but like LA Fashion Week is a joke, bro. It's like, <laughs> it's literally, it's like, it's like I didn't know local that. brands and like. Brands that are definitely trying to enter the space, mm-hmm. but like they have, they don't have. Yeah. Like they're making like, like bathing suits, yeah. and weird dresses. How does do you know how like what the barrier to entry is for that? Because I don't know. You look at like some. It's it's all different. It's like you can pay for your show mm-hmm. and yourself as long as you like. You can get invited to certain yeah. things. But it's like like in Paris, it's like the way it is. There's like a federation in Paris. Mm-hmm. There's like a set list of like these are the official shows for like Paris Fashion Week. And then there's like people will throw their own shows like here and there, and then they'll have like they'll rent out like like they'll rent out an Airbnb, and they'll have their whole collection that's showing, mm. so that people will come and like see the collection. But it's not a show, mm. but there's like a set list of like 
you know, Louis Vuitton and like all the main big. I guess I guess my point is like all these shows and stuff. There are like some brands that get in that like aren't like huge, right? They yeah, aren't yeah, the, like yeah. Louis Vuittons or like whatever. Like yeah, that. but objectively, from someone who's not into like fashion, mm-hmm. I'm just like, yo, that sweater looks just as good as a sweater you're wearing right now. Yeah. And I'm just like, what's the difference? How do they get if, in? If I put it, if I put the two next to each other, you you definitely. And I pointed out what the difference is. You definitely understand. It's really yeah, hard okay. to like. Like if I put this, this is fucking. Banana Republic. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, it's a nice sweater. I like it. But I, this is like what I throw on when I'm like whatever. Um, but if I put it next to like same type of sweater, but it's like yeah, higher end like. Like I don't want to say Gucci, but like yeah, any higher end brand like that does the same thing. Even like a. Acne Studios or like APC, which are like mid tier, like they're still expensive. Like this would be probably like two fifty, three hundred dollars. Yeah, know? this was like eighty bucks. Mm-hmm. I know. So it's like, so that's why like I'm confused sometimes. Yeah, I'm it's, like, it's definitely like you got to put them next to each other. Yeah. Of course, you walk in and like you see a blue sweater, you're like, so oh, there is a difference. Yeah, there's definitely a difference. Okay. I mean, some some brands definitely are shit. Uh-huh. I wouldn't buy a t shirt from a luxury brand yeah ever yeah because a they just smack their logo on it smack their logo on it and they charge like whatever yeah, don't ever do that don't ever buy a, like i'm just like why is this a premium shirt 300 oh that's not they're not they're 40 dollars but people resell them for yeah i know yeah that's a more like a notoriety <laughs> that's dumb i don't even do that that's, that's stupid i'm just curious because like i'm just like i, I i'm generally well confused. the box logo I can understand like the box, the regular plain one. Yeah, that's just like historical. Like it has this. It's just like if you keep it in good condition, it's just like in twenty years, it's gonna mean something because it's like when you're old and like let's say you have like a band tee mm-hmm. from like the concert you went to yeah. when you were sixteen in the seventies. Mm-hmm. Those shits are twelve thousand dollars now. Yeah, that's interesting. But that 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 that, that value because uh, my business partner he does he flips stuff on eBay. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he went to a thrift store and he, I think he got this Avatar cast, mm-hmm. the first Avatar cast. Like, it's only cast members on Avatar got to wear this shirt mm-hmm. um, from the thrift store. It's shot for like 10 bucks. I think sold it for like 300. Really? Because Avatar, of, the movie movie or Avatar, the last movie? Uh, the movie movie, oh, the first one. Yeah. And it was only like cast member shirts. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I mean, like, it's probably literally a $5 shirt. Yeah. But someone sure. bought it for 300 because of the value that it meant to them. Yeah. But it also, like, imagine, like, I guess the story to be told, like, with, I mean, with that 70s shirt, like, uh, like in the reference, I said it was, like, Supreme means the same thing to, like, a skater in the 90s as that band team. You know what I'm saying? Which is, like, mm-hmm. that band team might be shredded up, fucked mm-hmm. up. Still worth might be a grand. If I had a Metallica shirt from their very first biggest concert mm-hmm. and I had it and it was in great condition, that shit is probably worth like ten thousand dollars. You think so? Hell yeah. Really? Hell yeah. Wow. Just be just like for the fact that like this is a piece of history and somebody wants this shit just yeah. to like whatever frame it or wear it or you know, and like it's just like the fandom like, you yeah. know. It's like so. Supreme is the same way. If like if I had an original Supreme tee from like the nineties, mm-hmm. it's worth a lot of money. It's crazy. It's just like more of that than the new shit. Is kind of stupid now. It's just like, <laughs> but it's not everything. It's like we're in the just like crazy like level of ca- like consumerism where it's like yeah. people want to say like they want to say and show what they mm-hmm. have. You know so. Are you a uh, are you gold guy, bro? Like it's January. It's 15, 16 days into the new year. Um, I've changed my philosophy on like, I don't really have goals. It's just like, get better at whatever you're doing. Yeah. But I guess for you and your company or like in life in general, mm-hmm. have you, is there any aspects that you're just like, this um, is what I want? I set like a few hard goals, but not through the whole year, you know, like I'm not going to pressure myself too much. Mm. Um, I haven't been like that. I've never been crazy, crazy on that shit. Just because Bunch of shit always happens. That's so you have for failure too sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and then like you get depressed. Yeah, shit because you just you, get anxious yeah. about a lot of stuff. But I definitely think like like you said, just like I like I told you earlier, like I just want to be super productive this month. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it'll set me up for the next month. Yeah. So I can see like gauge exactly just that, like, where my head is at. Snowball like, yeah. effect. But um, 
All right. <coughs> I definitely try to create like a a game plan in my head where I'm keeping busy. Mm -hmm. Like 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 I said, like I I've been doing like thirty minutes of like designing every few hours or like mm -hmm. morning and then night. It's mm -hmm. like those aren't really goals, but I guess my goal is to do it every day. Yeah. You know? So I'm not like writing it down, it's just like make sure I do it. Sure. Um, I think like once I get a sense of like how well I'm doing, yeah. After this month, maybe, then I'll start being like, all right, it's time to like make a goal with yeah. this current level of like discipline I'm having mm -hmm. right now. But I really need to start like getting my discipline a lot more like settled in mm -hmm. and not really slacking off when I just don't feel like doing shit. Sure. Um. So. Yeah, right now that's what that's what's about. I just that whole New Year's shit. It's not. It doesn't work, bro. <laughs> not for me. Yeah, I haven't had a lot of success yeah. with it. Um, last year I I posted like my like whole New Year's. I mean, not New Year's, like you know the reflection of like, like a reel about like twenty twenty two. And like I really thought about it. I looked at it. so every year I write down like on my whiteboard in my room like things that I want to accomplish, and it might not be anything big like in fitness in uh 2020 it was like 50 pull ups didn't get it mm -hmm. like but some things i did cross off like i think i don't remember it was like land a backflip i hit that mm -hmm. like the one was like launch the website for the business company this was in 2020 but last year in 2022 like i didn't cross off one thing mm -hmm. it's the first time i did in probably like any time that i've ever wrote written down on that list yeah but i've gained so many experiences in 2022 that like made me i think a better person yeah yeah or made me feel fulfilled in some way or you know went out of the country like had this experience and it really made me feel like i feel like the goals of that year aren't as important as what we want them to be yeah versus just progressing in the things that you want to do yeah you know yeah definitely I, I, yeah that's a good way to put it i think it's like i think what i need to focus more on is like just enjoying what I'm doing to get to uh, some sort of next level because yeah I think when I have like set goals I've either I, I think I don't know how to do it the right way mm -hmm. sometimes like I'll be like I want to make this thing I want to make like I think last year I did or two years ago it might have been I forgot when it was <laughs> one of these years <laughs> some years I, that yeah, I was alive I, I wrote some shit down and I didn't do any of that shit. I made it. I did it. I'm about like I think I said. I save ten thousand dollars. I think I got to ten thousand dollars, but I did not save it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure. I think I had it in my possession. Yeah. All at once. Yeah. I absolutely did not save it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Oh, I already yeah. some crypto yeah. when you die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, uh, what am I gonna do? You know? Do yeah. I check that off? You know? Yeah. But I, I, it's like I think I feel like I have to just be more consistent and disciplined on my own right now. Yeah. That's like my main focus is like getting up, being about it, and kind of like not giving myself any excuses because I've definitely done that. Like, especially like last year, I was just like... That's the excuse part, bro. Yeah, I was kind of it. fucking off last year. I was yeah. just kind of doing whatever and just, especially over the summertime, I don't even know. It just, it just went by so fast where yeah. I was like... And like your your opposite side of the conscience is like validating the bullshit you're doing to make you feel better about yeah. yourself. It's like, oh, it's it's hard right now. <laughs> no, like I it's it's like I'm making it harder by not doing what I want to do because by the end of the week yeah. I'm so exhausted from the thoughts that I'm not doing something yeah. that I'm not gonna do it. Now. And it's hard to remember too, like the things that you're doing right now for the company are the things that you wanted to do before you started it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, because I'm like, if I don't do this right now. I'm gonna have to hire somebody to do this shit. Yeah. I'm not gonna know what they're doing. I'm not even gonna know how to explain it. And I'm not gonna know if they're doing it right. Yeah. So I might as well just get this shit done. And figure it out. Yeah. So I I've, I've been I really been on that. Do you have any uh, advice for like people who want to start some shit? Um call people, call everybody that you don't like, especially like taxes, like call, talk to somebody. Yeah. Uh, get some books, yeah, and read a little bit about everything. Google everything. There's no stupid question ever. Like yeah. <laughs> in business, is like I've asked people shit, especially if you have people that can help you. Like just ask. 
Yeah. And even if you just feel stupid. The worst thing they say is no. Or yeah. Like, or no. after the answer, you're going to be smarter. You know? Yeah. Like, like, so it's like, if they give you the right answer, you're going to feel smarter. Or they're going to give you something to think about. So yeah. it's like, I think that's like, I've asked people that I've just met, like, what do you think about so-and-so? And it's like, they give me an honest answer because they're willing to help. You know, like, why would I set somebody else up for failure if I'm not a dickhead, you know? Yeah. So, like, yeah, dude. just ask, man. Like, don't be afraid. If you really want something. Yeah, there we go. I think we'll end it there, bro. Um, where can, I guess, like, uh, if someone wants to look at your brand and stuff, like, where would they find that? Um, the website should be done after I set my goal. <laughs> uh, it'll be heavy.ww um, probably in a few weeks. Um, that'll be the Instagram. I'm and just the putting website. Gabe on the spot, guys. Yeah, like, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that'll, that's the Instagram and the website. Uh, heavy.ww? Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, a few weeks, man. Everything should be getting really um, rolling. I'm excited for you, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah, Thank we'll you. continue to keep doing our thing. And uh, are you still accepting the cuts right now? Not from anybody. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to cut, hit me up. <laughs> I'll refer yeah, you. Yeah, Nate will do it. <laughs> All right, peace, guys. Thank All you so right. much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Peace.